Hey everybody, we will be starting in just a second. <sighs> Let's get to it. Uh, hopefully this music isn't too loud. But hi, how's it going everybody? I'm doing fine, how about you? Uh, Lady May, hey Nesmi, unfortunately won't be able to catch the stream today because I have COVID and feel really bleh. I might be able to pop in occasionally though, but I'm not really sure. Hey, yeah, definitely uh, do whatever you gotta to take care of yourself, Lainey. I'm really sorry to hear that you have COVID, that sucks. Um, but I hope you feel better soon. I, I hope you recover quickly. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, let's get in here. Uh, once again, let me know if the, if the volume is off. Adjusting it between games sometimes means that it gets a little weird sometimes. Uh, June Pop, if you yeah, uh, yeah, I can. I I mean, you're you're around pretty often, so uh, I don't think you'll abuse mod powers. Go ahead. Sorry, the music stops whenever I click out of the window. What would you do if Freddy Fazbear was revealed to be in this game? Uh, I would scream and cry and, and, and die in a, a horrible explosion. If I were to die in a horrible explosion due to the carelessness of a friend, well, that would just be okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk to everybody. Get a, get a little bit of a, an idea of what we're dealing with before we head into the trial here. Let's move. Well said. Kobazine. We finally escaped from the ballroom due to the death of Kobashikawa-kun and escaped the risk of being hungry to death. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. We can only survive by someone's sacrifice. It's the same for the class trials. The expense of one criminal, it's a system where everyone lives. So sad that I have to do this again. This case? No, you don't have to think so complicated. What do you want? Don't worry about me. I'm not crying. Kirk has got nothing to say. Damn. All right, well, 
I guess we are ready to head into the trial. But once we get in there, we are definitely going to be doing a little bit of evidence review first. I know we still played this game relatively recently, but it's been it's been a week. Then I'll open the door. Let's go. We talked to Kinjo. He just didn't have much to say. <laughs> At first, I thought that this elevator was so narrow that it felt full, but now it's so wide. I looked at the six other than me, in heavy silence, one by one. Kinjo is now in complete trial mode. In this state, Kinjo does a 180 degree change. He only uses his head to break through the events before his eyes. But it's because is it because of our mood that it looks like there's an anxious expression somewhere? Irinami, who has not lost her bright appearance at any time, she was still unable to escape from her shock of losing Haru. She wasn't the same. She wasn't the same Satsuki anymore, and her shaggy appearance made even the beholder's heart ache. Oh. <laughs> Kurikawa was always the same. She just stayed consistent in silence, and I couldn't even tell what she was thinking. Tyra looked very tired. She doesn't want to lose any more friends, and she doesn't want to go through class trials anymore. That kind of heart seemed to linger on her face. Teria was restless. After the incident, I may feel that Teria's behavior is strange, but if you think about it, Teria was like this at every trial, so it's not unusual. Mikaru wasn't saying that she'd watch us, watch us shovel as usual, but she was thinking of something unfamiliar to Mikaru, like something unexpected even for her. Is there anything that will get us stuck in this case? Different thoughts and different beliefs cross between each other. At the point where there are only seven people left, we're thinking differently, but we have to overcome this. A hell-like fourth-class trial. Uh, I have a prediction for who I think the, the murderer will be in this case, and I don't like it. The elevator stops, as if we have made an appointment. We step at the same time without a special signal towards a very familiar courtroom. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, my, my prediction, I could be wrong, but uh, I feel like at this point in the game especially, it, I honestly think it's probably gonna be Satsuki. I, I hate to say it, but I think it probably is. <clears throat> but we'll see. You're here! I was waiting! How are you guys? It's been a long time, hasn't it? You met with us right after the murder happened a little while ago, though, right? Eh, nah. I mean meeting me, me as the judge. Well, it's been more than a week since the last class trial. Instead of that, this presiding judge is more stylish than usual. Don't be useless and start the damn thing already. Shocked. Well... I'm always neglected, but this time it's getting more thorns. Don't you think so, Maidakun? I don't care. Start as Mikaru said already. Even Maidakun is rude to me. Hmm, this could be a sign to represent your heartache. <laughs> then I'll start as you want. Now, shall we start right away? To uncover the truth of the prolonged stay in the ballroom incident for more than a week, we have the all-exciting, heart-pounding class trial! The only thing that's the same as usual is Monokuma. Each one of us were in serious mode, unlike usual. The, tense, the tenseness in this trial, the feeling of losing a dear friend to us, the reasons were different, but in the end, we came here for the class trial. Now, all that remains is to find the culprit by confronting all the clues, testimonies, and test our wits with that we have. Haruhiko. Our relationship with him was finally bonding us together in the middle. He was like a licorice in a drugstore. What? what? <laughs> with Satsuki, he always showed his bright side, and at the same time, his love for his friends was twice as deep as anyone else's. As a result, thanks to his death, we were able to eat and survive. But Haruhiko couldn't eat anymore. It was an unavoidable choice to live, but as a result, there's a culprit that killed Haruhiko. If we don't find them, we'll all die in the end. The atmosphere of the court is filled with silence. Our trial finally begins. A life-threatening discussion. 
a life-threatening lie, a life-threatening betrayal, a life-threatening conclusion, a life-threatening de defense, a life-threatening trust, a life-threatening class trial. All right. Let's go. This remix of Trial Underground is uh, pretty pretty dope, honestly. Okay. Let's check our evidence. Let's review. <clears throat> Monokuma File 4. The victim is Haruhiko Kabashikawa. The estimated time of death is about 6 a.m. The body was found in the arsenal. The cause of death is excessive bleeding due to a gunshot wound on the right chest. In addition, the middle and index and middle finger of his right hand were ruptured and broken. That's right. Gunshot chest wound. A gunshot wound on the body's chest is also written in the Monokuma file, but it appears to be the direct cause of death. Unlike so far, it is the first murder that has occurred with a weapon for murder called a gun. So I can only get a sense of how to deal with these things. Furthermore, there are so many weapons in the arsenal and all of them are scattered, it won't be easy to find which one did it. Ruptured right hand. The corpse's right hand was in a terrifyingly miserable state. The flesh was tattered and a little discolored, while the index and middle fingers were completely cut off and went missing. What method was used to destroy a hand in such a horrifying way? And was there any reason to destroy someone's hand like this? The guns on display in the arsenal were randomly scattered, so it was impossible to find out the direct murder weapon that hit Haruhiko. It's possible that the culprit deliberately destroyed the gun. Unnatural bloodstains. The bloodstain that Haruhiko shed was a little strange, as if he was wandering throughout the arsenal. Blood was smeared everywhere like a path. Was the killer dragging his corpse around? Anyways, there must be a reason for the blood to be left in this state. Severed fingers, yeah. It's Haruhiko's severed fingers. However, seeing that the location of his fingers are quite far from the body, I should also consider the possibility that Haruhiko was moved from his original position where he was killed. Destroyed gun. This gun was completely destroyed. The gun was also smeared with blood, shattered, and fragmented. One interesting thing is that it was a loaded gun. How was it destroyed like this? I should also consider the possibility that this was the murder weapon that killed Haruhiko. It cannot be ruled out given the bullets in it. Flash and smoke grenades. These were located near the entrance of the arsenal. I recall the fact when we opened the door to the arsenal at first. It seems the criminal manipulated two grenades to detonate when the door was opened. If that's the case, what's the reason? There's a possibility the culprit in the arsenal escaped as they crossed us through the flashbang and smoke. Wood plank. This wood plank is broken and it was stuck in the doorknob of the arsenal. When I opened the door with Teria, we heard a sound of something crack from the inside while pushing, which seems it was the origin of the sound. The purpose was to make the door hard to open. At the same time, we put the flash and smoke grenades on top of it. So when we opened the door, they would fall, right? A corner gun. It's a pistol that doesn't look much different than the pistol is destroyed. One strange thing is that it was alone in a corner as if someone hit it. Does it mean something, or is it just the killer disposed of it while messing with their gun? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Terria did, like, point it out, basically, and say, like, hey, don't touch that. You know, it, if it went off, it would explode and kill me or whatever. Like, he was, like, suspiciously aware of it. Uh, I do remember that. But I feel like that's also a little bit too easy. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot. We also have a truth bullet about that. Terrier's behavior. Touching a gun alone in the corner of the arsenal, Terrier showed a strange disapproval. He kept telling me to keep my hands off the gun because it could trigger on its own. What on earth was he talking about? And when I questioned him, he panicked and left the arsenal. Does Terrier know something? Letter in the room. After borrowing a key from Haruhiko's body and checking his room, we found an unknown letter on the floor. The contents of the letter are as follows. To Haruhiko, I have something to tell you. If you read this, why don't you come to the arsenal? I'm not trying to kill you. I hope you believe me. I'll wait. Mikiko's testimony. The room that Mikiko used was the room right next to the arsenal. According to her, she heard a few people entering the arsenal during the dawn hours. She didn't say any details, but Mikiko might know our alibis during dawn. Tsurugi's testimony. According to Kinjo, the gunshot that caused Haruhiko's death would not have been an instant death. The bullet didn't get stuck and went through the body, so the impact was small, and they may have been able to move even a little. However, he said they probably died not long after his chest was blown. Okay, that's everything. Well, I believe we're not gonna be any more ready after this than we are right now, so let's go ahead and get on with it. gonna start ending my letters with I'm not going to kill you for every situation. <laughs>
First, let's start with a brief explanation of the class trial. The outcome of the class trial is decided by your votes. Uh, so Mercy, I don't know if anybody has said this yet, but occasionally there are some tracks in the OST that have been playing which haven't been from any of the DR games. Those are from Digimon Cyber Sleuth. Interesting. I, I have never played Digimon Cyber Sleuth, but uh, yeah, I think it would be really funny if I ended up playing that game in the future and I was like, whoa, that's the Danganronpa and other music. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> If you point out the blackened, only they will be punished. But in case you point out the wrong person, then I'll punish everyone else everyone else except the blackened. And the only and the one who deceived everyone else can proudly leave this school. Also, this translation was made by Zephy. Please give a heartfelt support to the videos. Subscribe to stay in touch with the story. Yeah, please uh, definitely support uh, the person who made this translation. Uh, they did it completely by themselves. So that is a uh, really, really difficult to do. finally started, the fourth class trial. One of us is the culprit that killed Haruhiko. We must find the culprit at all cost. Now then, please begin your discussion. Uh, um, guys? Ah, right, uh, yeah. Should we, uh, start discussing? Okay, we have to work hard. So, where do we start with? What? with this stuffy, awkward mood. Well, it's not unreasonable because our conflict reached its peak. First, I think each of you will have a lot of things to say before the trial, and the feelings that you're feeling will be different. But now, let's focus on the trial in front of you, aside from everything else. Just like we did before. N did before so far, haven't we? Kinjo. As Kinjo said, now it's the trial. Let's swallow what we want to say to each other for a moment, because survival is our priority now. Huh, you don't take that for granted, do you? Let's get started already. Then, let's begin. Once we get the case sorted out, let's organize the series of events in chronological order based on what each knows. Hey, wait a minute. Before that, I have something to say for just a minute, please. What is it, Iranami? I'm the killer. Oh, okay. Huh? Is it Satsuki-chan? What did you say just now? I said, I'm the killer. I'm the culprit who killed Haruhiko Kabashikawa! Don't play around, dear Nami. What are you saying all of a sudden? It's not a joke! Are you serious? Don't make me laugh. Do you think that if you claim to be the criminal without physical evidence or logic, you'll become the culprit? Um, but I really killed Haruhiko. It can't be. Stop making bad jokes, Satsuki-chan. You should explain one step at a time. If we listen and you're, we're convinced, then we can really believe that you're the culprit. Suddenly, what is all this? Just as the trial begins, she said she was the culprit. If it were a normal culprit, they would never confess. But would Satsuki really be the culprit? Before making any judgments, let's first li listen to Satsuki's story. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, refresh me on the controls. Yeah, it's changed with shift. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, the game heard me. Like, hmm. Flash and smoke grenades, letter in the room, and gunshot chest wound. Okay. Why are you claiming to be the culprit? Let's hear your reason. At dawn, Kobazin called me. Mm-hmm. I followed Kobazin. We went to the arsenal. And then, all by myself, he pointed a gun at me. Whoa, what? I just shot him in self-defense. It can't be. Uh, if Satsuki really is the culprit, it means the victim Haruhiko himself called the culprit. But isn't that a little weird? Haruhiko was actually the one who was called. That clue proves it. Yeah, okay, that's a really easy one. Okay. 
Wait, Satsuki, Haruhiko called you? Isn't that odd? I is it weird? The victim, Haruhiko, called you? The culprit? That can't be it. Rather, the victim, Haruhiko, was called by the culprit and went to the arsenal. If you were the culprit, you would know. I you're saying he was called by the killer? That's... I don't know. That's ridiculous. The letter that was put in Haruhiko's room is what he's talking about. The contents are like this. To Haruhiko, I have something to tell you. If you read this, why don't you come to the arsenal? I'm not trying to kill you. I hope you believe me. I'll wait. Whoa! If the contents of that letter are true, it makes no sense that Kabashikawa can call Satsuki-chan and took her to the arsenal, right? It would be the opposite. That's right. But Satsuki said that she doesn't know much about this letter. The killer doesn't know the letter they sent. Nope. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. What if it was manipulation? Yuki and Tsurugi wrote that letter that I didn't know, and you're manipulating things now. Don't be a thickhead. Obviously, this evidence came from Haruhiko's room. Why are you talking about... thickness? <laughs> don't do that. This is a very strange way to phrase that. <laughs> So, uh, Iranami's not the culprit? Oh, wrong! I really mean it! I'm the real culprit! Just looking at the current evidence, to say that Satsuki is the culprit, it's hard to tell, but I want to make things a little more clear. So, let's ask about it. How do he goes other wound, whose source is unknown to the evidence that only the culprit, only they must know? Okay. Uh, well, there's his... I, I guess it would be his hand, probably. Because, obviously, the, the chest wound is the really obvious one. Or, well, I don't know, though. It If we're talking about, like, the, the gun, in terms of, like, which gun was used, I don't know. Like, it could be that. Huh. I'm going to I'm going to try the hand first and see. Okay. Satsuki, if you're really the culprit, there's one thing I want you to tell me. This isn't like a le the letter, but a direct clue to Haruhiko's body. So, if you're the culprit, it's a clue that you must know. What's that? Haruhiko's right hand, you recall? His right hand was completely shattered. It's hard to say that this was a gunshot wound. If you're the culprit, can you tell me the true nature of this wound? Uh, I don't know. Why did his hand become that way? You don't have to talk anymore. You're not the culprit. Wait a second. I'm telling the truth. Why are you still claiming to be the killer? If it's real, even if Iranami is the culprit, you'll only get executed. I don't know what you're thinking, but this is not a joke. If Iranami unnecessarily confuses our reasoning and chooses the wrong killer, we'll all die. Maybe. That might have been the purpose. What? She was close to Haruhiko Kabashikawa, who died this time, right? Apparently, it looks like she was in severe shock, unlike the usual one, who always talks at random. With that shock in mind, you're trying to make us follow Haruhiko Kabashikawa's fate. Isn't that right? Uh, that was it? Absolutely not. Of course, I'm really sad that Haru died, but I'm very much sane. Stop it, Iranami. We haven't even started a proper discussion yet. If the discussion goes on, the killer will be naturally revealed. If you're really the killer, you don't have to rush things. It'll all turn out okay. Satsuki-chan. Oh, all right then. Let's discuss about it. Has it been roughly organized? You wasted my time on useless things. So let's start from the beginning again. When the case started to happen, to happen, Hold on a minute, is it okay to wait one minute before that? In this case, can we assume that Iranami isn't completely the culprit? No, not necessarily. If Iranami is really the culprit, there's still a possibility there. That's it? 
We haven't started any reasoning yet. First, there's a possibility from what happened a little while ago, but... Maybe there's something up. In that way, they were excluding themselves from the suspect line. They... that had to be calculated. With Hiranami's mind, it'd be impossible to tell. Hey, you're treating me as a fool right now? I don't think it was on purpose. Quiet. First, as Kinjo says, let's summarize the unfolding of the case. Oh, right. Where can we start from the evening before the incident happened? Oh, that was when we... Maida-kun, Kobashikawa-kun, Otori-kun, and Satsuki-chan, Mikiko-chan and me. Six people gathered at the restaurant. Maida-kun called us and... At the time, we were at the limit of our hunger, and we all thought to come together and meet each other in the thought that we should somehow unfold a hard policy. At that time, Teria suggested... Uh, I'll tell you, I wasn't really sane back then. That's what happened. Uh, it was my fault for being immature. What's this? I didn't even see your faces the day before the murder took place. I don't know this, so explain direct exactly what's going on. Teria gave us a pen and paper to nominate one victim and one culprit. He asked for one person to vote since Monokuma banned suicide. It was a plan to set up the case at the expense of two people. That was really crazy. I'm so sorry. It's alright. It's all over now. We almost agreed to this plan, too. I feel like whatever actually happened was probably along these lines, though, to be completely honest, if I'm just guessing at this point. I feel like somebody actually probably took this idea and was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> Looks like the part I saw from there. I broke into the restaurant because the absurd plan was about to be implemented. Yeah, Kinjo-kun came in and handed out guns to each of us, to commit suicide. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no, no, nothing at all. Keep going. Well, that's when we started to fight back at Kinjo, and we were lucky enough to catch him and was judged to be dangerous, so he couldn't move anymore. Oh my, sorry. <clears throat> I'm so uneducated today. Continue, so? Uh, the problem starts after this. Uh, thanks to Kinjo, the plan was halted, but there was no progress for the day. We locked Kinjo in the room and then went back to our room. Between this morning, Haruhiko died. I couldn't sleep at all last night, so I was staying with my eyes open. But I heard something outside in the morning, so I went out and Maida -kun was asking for- Oh, Maida was asking for help, saying that the door wasn't opening. And when you somehow opened the door, you found the body? Yeah, that's right. This case is missing our eyes between the dawn hours, and there's not much evidence, so we have no choice but to share information we know with each other. First, a few alibis can be established just by hearing about this. Alibis? Yes, so then let's dig into the alibis one by one, all right? All right. Kurokawa's testimony, unnatural blood stains, severed fingers, and destroyed gun. Okay. First off, it won't be a problem if I excluded myself from the suspect list since I was tied up, right? Oh, certainly. An idea where Kinjo commits the crime doesn't seem possible. I haven't have an alibi too. Maida and me. Oh, Maida and me have an alibi too. We were together when the BDA happened. If so, the ones who can be as suspected as a criminal are. Meikaru, Taira, Irinami, Kurikawa. It's those four people. I really don't have an alibi, but it's not me. Satsuki is the killer! You shut up already. Stop causing trouble. If only there was more information that would check our alibis at dawn. Oh yeah, okay. I, I know what this is probably gonna be. Somebody wandered around at dawn. The killer wouldn't have been able to move. Everyone was insane at the time, and an incident happened while everyone's senses were bad near dawn hours. So it's necessary to establish a certain alibi. Come to think of it, I think someone apparently saw people heading to the arsenal near morning. Could that information help about our alibis? Yeah, that's what I thought it would be. Okay, 
<clears throat> Let's uh, keep it on Kurokawa's testimony, and it's like right at the end here. Yep. Kinjo, wait, come to think of it. I think there was someone. Someone who knows the alibis during dawn in detail. Who is it? During the investigation, Kurokawa, she clearly testified to me that she had seen who, who went to the arsenal in the morning. Right, Kurokawa? Yes. What? If that's true, the culprit has already been revealed, right? You're noisy. Be quiet. Hey, Dark Circles. So, who did you see? Kurokawa's room was right next to the arsenal, so she heard the arsenal's door opening and closing. Of course, the arsenal is soundproof, so she didn't hear the sounds from the inside. I don't think hearing only the sound is enough to be direct, a direct test, witness testimony. No. I saw people passing by in front of my door. What? No way you've been watching the hall- No way you've been watching the hallway all morning. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. But then, still, it would have been difficult to stay sane in hunger, but watching the hallway all night without sleep is... However, that works nicely in reverse. The culprit couldn't have thought that there must have been someone in the midst watching the corridor. That's a great achievement, Kurokawa. So then, who passed by? Well, I don't know the time. The exact time is unknown, but... But it was in this order. First was Haruhiko and Satsuki, from left to right. The arsenal didn't open at this time. A little later, Satsuki went from right to left. She was alone at this time. A little later after Irinami passed, Teruya went from left to right. A little later again, I heard the sound of the arsenal door. Then Teruya went from right to left. And after a while, Haruhiko goes from right to left. Soon after, Haruhiko and Satsuki are together again. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, but wait a minute. That, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what's left to right or right to left. Can't you tell us a little more clearly? Wow, Akane, don't you know how to read manga? It's right to left, obviously. Don't start at the back of the book, Tar. <laughs> God, you you guys remember those, right? The the little, like, disclaimers in the back of manga. Like, hey, stupid, you're reading it the wrong way. I hope that you're ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You're the only one that doesn't understand something so simple, aren't you? Don't cut the flow for no reason. Focus and listen. <laughs> Don't be like that. I'm a little confused too. But let's listen to Kurokawa's story until the end and reorganize it in an easy to understand manner. Is that everything? Mm. Uh, my favorite iteration of the uh... The, like, you're reading this backwards manga thing is the uh, joke version in Scott Pilgrim in one of the Scott Pilgrim volumes where it's just Wallace and it's like, uh, this is a Western comic. It's read from left to right. Uh, open this book the right way. Your mother and I are very disappointed in you. <laughs> Indeed. As you said, you can assume that the killer has already revealed themselves. At the time of the investigation, I didn't know this because Kurokawa didn't tell me properly, but this is definitely a tremendous amount of information. Hey, I want to join the discussion too, but can't you tell us a little bit more easily? Oh, sorry, Tyra. I'll organize it so it's easy to understand. But before that, there's something I want to check again. The location of the room each of us was using. If we know this, I think we can properly organize Kurokawa's information. Well, that's certainly something I want to do and need to move on. Need to move on. From what I roughly checked with each other during the investigation. Everyone remembers the structure of the corridor behind the ballroom where all the rooms are listed, right? As you would know, if you did a little closer examination, there was a small tag on the door of each room. Oh, that's, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> room 112, room 3, room 4, room 5, room 6, like it, okay, so it's like, yeah, it kind of like alternates. 
I guess, after... Hmm. That's... Yeah, that's... Ugh. Okay, yeah. I guess I might have to... Might have to screenshot this real quick. I'll just take a picture with my phone. Alright. I'll pull it up again if I have to. And according to the tag, the rooms are distributed in this manner. Monokuma randomly gave us a key for each room. And from what I've investigated- Oh, okay, it's still Kinjo. From what I've investigated. Oh, wait. Maybe should have taken a picture with this version of it. Okay. This is probably how each of us were located in each room. When we reconsider Kurokawa's testimony after arranging the distribution of each room used by each person in this way, we can see that a few suspects are eliminated. Well, I mean, I didn't understand Mikiko's words at all. That's your own fault. Are you going to blow up valuable discussion time for someone like you? Kinjo, that's too far. It's important for one person to know about the case, right? I'll rearrange it and explain it to Tyra. Do what you like. Preferably as quickly as possible. Kinjo-kun, you still don't seem to forgive me. Tyra, so to summarize Kurokawa's words simply. First, the fact that Kurokawa watched the hallway all morning. Tyra, you heard it earlier, right? And based on what Kinjo, Kinjo summarized, Kurokawa's room is room 8. It's the room on the right side of the arsenal. When he goes straight from the entrance of the arsenal to the corridor, As Kurikawa explained a little while ago, what she said was from left to right, and from right to left was based on the direction facing the corridor in Kurikawa's room. Here, I'll make it more easy to understand with pictures. In the order that Kurikawa saw it, Haruhiko and Satsuki were the first people to pass by in front of the door at this time. She said there was no sound of the arsenal door opening at this time, so I think it's just that the two of them were passing by. And a little later, she said that Satsuki passed by alone again in the opposite direction. Shortly after this, she said that Teruya passed by. And at this time, she could hear the sound of the arsenal door opening. This probably means that Teruya went to the arsenal. After a while, the sound of the arsenal door opening was heard again, and then Teruya passed to the opposite direction. Soon after, Haruhiko passed by the same direction again. Okay. After this, Haruhiko and Satsuki went from left to right again. And at this time, the door to the arsenal was opened. Someone went into the arsenal. After that, there was no movement for a while, and after a little time passed, Satsuki passed by with the sound of the arsenal door opening. These are all of the movements that Kurikawa saw and heard during the morning. After this, well, she heard the ruckus of the arsenal door next, but that was probably the sounds of me trying to open the door. So yeah, there was a time where uh, they both passed by again, and then after that, Haruhiko did not come back. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> Teruya, who passed by, heard the sounds I made. So Satsuki was the last one that saw him alive. I think so, yeah. Then I opened the door with Teruya's help during this time. That's the summary of what Kurikawa heard and saw, roughly like this. Do you understand? Wow, when Maida could explain it to me, I understood it all at once. Thanks. Really? But wait, if we look from the current events on each step... Yeah, there's one suspicious person. Do you see it clearly? I can't guarantee 100% that what Kurikawa heard and saw was everything that happened at dawn, but with the information obtained till now has resulted in one influential suspect of this case. That person is... I mean, it genuinely could be any of them here, honestly. I mean, like, obviously, uh, suicide is ruled out, but, like, all of these options have some merit. I don't know which one exactly it's 
trying to point me toward. Considering that Satsuki just did her whole like, you know, it's me, I'm the culprit, and then everybody was like, no, no, it isn't thing, then I would have to imagine that they're trying to get me to interrogate Teria for a little bit, considering the the whole like, you know, suspicious thing that he was doing earlier. I'm, I'm sure they probably want me to question him about it, so I'm gonna try that. Hello. Yep. Teria. It's the only one who fits to be the main suspect of this case. Huh? M m me Haruhiko was the victim, so he couldn't help it. The fact that Satsuki was close to Haruhiko makes me understand why she was there. But why did Teria move around like that so early in the morning? Oh, uh, uh, that was, uh, uh, what was it again? Uh, right, I was investigating, yeah. Everyone was in a panic, so I wanted to find clues to get out even for a little bit. Just a few hours ago, you were trying to pick two victims. The guy who was despairing and doing investigation was thinking of all these things. Doesn't that sound a little weird? Uh, that's all there is to it. The way it fixed my mind. Uh, people can change their mind easily, you know. Even if that's true that you did an investigation, if you think about it based on Kurokawa's testimony, you were only in the arsenal. What kind of investigation did you do in the arsenal? Uh, no, I never went into the arsenal. Otori-kun, please stop the pretense and explain properly. What the hell did you do in the arsenal? I never went into the arsenal! Teruya? Why does it have to only be me? I did nothing wrong! If you look at it, Satsuki also went around Dawn. Why am I only suspicious? Yeah, I'm the culprit. Are you still saying that? I told you to be quiet. Certainly. Irinami is well under enough suspicion. However, she said that she didn't know the identity of the letter, nor did she know about Haru's hand. So that's it then. You're just gonna take her off the list just cause she doesn't know. That's a long shot. I didn't know anything about the letter or the right hand either. Don't be mistaken, Teria. You now said that Irinami is the culprit, and you don't know about these clues. Well, Irinami claims to be the culprit, but she doesn't recognize these clues or entirely different matters. Then what about Maida? When I saw him this morning, he was trying to get into the arsenal, so Maida's also suspicious. That just happened. Yes, I won't deny that Maida is a suspect, as you claim. He has been in and out of the arsenal the previous day and even this morning. He had the strange idea of going into the arsenal again. But this and that is a separate matter. As a result, Maida failed to enter the arsenal this morning. There was no testimony of Kurokawa witnessing in the morning, so this is not suitable for committing the crime. Oh, well, anyways, I don't know about that. I'm exactly trying to protect him, but... I'm, uh, what, uh, I think it's probably supposed to be. I'm not exactly. I'm not exactly trying to protect him, but relying only on Dark Circle's testimony has a slightly loose time frame. I'm going to ignore it to not make me go nuts and move on already. I know that. It's about the structure of the ballroom, right? The structure? Think about it. Even if Kurokawa watched the hallway all night, it's all about lock looking outside of the room and hearing the arsenal door. But if you look at the structure of the ballroom, you can easily enter the arsenal without passing by Kurokawa's door. Because we were all at the ballroom for a week, I think everyone should know, but the arsenal is structural structured around the dance hall at 360 degrees. In other words, if you go back to the other side, you can enter the arsenal without being noticed by Kurokawa. Moreover, in the case of Maida, Kurokawa does not stand out, even if he does not use this method, and goes straight into the arsenal. One second. Sorry, I have to look at something real quick. In the case of Maida, Kurokawa does not stand out even if he does not use this method and goes straight into the arsenal from his own room, since it was in the opposite side to Kurokawa's room in the first place. You knew that too. See? Maida's the culprit after all! But there's something you shouldn't overlook. Even if you use some method to enter the arsenal without showing your appearance to Kurokawa, there's still the sound of the door opening and closing. That can only be heard by Kurokawa. 
Uh, but in Mika Kochan's testimony, the sound of the arsenal opening and closing was always heard before and after someone passed her door. That's right. After all, the person who walked in and out of the arsenal at dawn. I can't think of anything other than these three people who showed up in that testimony. Haruhiko, Satsuki, and Teruya. That... that's all lies! So, Teruya, you went into the arsenal and I want to hear your reason to make sure. If you're really innocent, there's no reason to be in a panic, right? Then I'm really innocent! Really, I just went to the arsenal to... I just went in for a minute! I don't think that there will be an end to this if it goes on like this. What is Teruya so afraid of? I'm not sure. He doesn't want to say anything because... Well, I'm not certain, but I'll have to show some more convincing evidence that he has no choice but to speak with his own words. Come to think of it, there seems to be one suspicious thing about Teria during the investigation. What was it? It was when the in I was investigating something in the arsenal. Let's recall that moment. Yeah, okay. From now on, spot selection will commence. What? Spot selection. Images or photos in your memory will begin to appear. Look for the places that contain the answer to the current topic. The method is simple. A photo or a picture that fits the current topic will appear. The minigame is pointing to a place where you can find the answer. Point it and select the decision key. However, if you have chosen a place other than the one that gives the correct answer in this case, you will lose speech power and start again. Good luck and have fun. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, then this, this one's easy then. It's, uh, over here. Come to think of it, Teruya, didn't say some didn't you say something strange to me when I was investigating? What? Something strange? I don't know. I found a gun that was dropped in a corner, and when I checked it to investigate, suddenly you came and told me not to touch it, because it will blow up. What do you mean, Maida? Tell us in more detail. Uh there was a gun in the corner of the arsenal that was hard to see. I tried to investigate why it was in a corner like that. Suddenly, Teria, who was nearby, ran up and told me not to touch it because it would blow up if I shot. Maybe he thought I was going to use the gun. If you shoot, it will blow up? What are you talking about? <laughs> Haruhiko got freaking vaporized like Rorschach. <laughs> yeah, uh, Haruhiko standing uh, on the opposite side of the street, like, <laughs> talking about, like, I, I just want everybody to be able to eat food. I just, I just want to eat pasta, man. That's all. And then <laughs> Terry is standing on the opposite end, raises one finger. <laughs> but I want the food. <laughs> it like, fucking explodes. <laughs> no, before answering that question, how did he know about that? That's... That's... Uh, that's... Maida, the gun. Did you properly investigate it? Huh? I did examine it roughly, but it was a normal gun with nothing special. I thought it was equipped with a bomb or something because I thought it was going to explode. Probably. It's not like that. Hey, Morikuma. Eh? Did you call me? I was enjoying this. What's up? I require you to submit evidence. Bring the gun that Maida mentioned. What? What are you... Why am I being ordered? Submit evidence? Is that possible? It's part of the debate on the class trial. There's no problem by the rules. You, the judge, have no right to deny it. Well, that's correct. There's no profit to reject it. Besides, if it's part of the discussion, what's the point? Gee, I really don't like that attitude. How can you be so cheeky? Shut up and get it already. <laughs> Actually, I thought this was going to happen, and I brought it from the beginning. Now, here you go! Hmm. How is it? This is it. Oh, special CG. It's a bullet. A bullet? It was loaded? It's not a simple bullet. It's a bullet for shotguns and medium-sized rifles. Bullets that do not meet the standard were, were forcibly loaded to this gun. If you pull the trigger with one of these, a bullet that doesn't fit into the magazine, it enters the chamber and blocks the muzzle, and of course, no bullet shell comes out. The pressure from the gunpowder has disappeared from where it's supposed to go. Instead, it goes spreading all over the gun itself. It will end up being shattered. Wait a minute, but then why did Teruyuken know about this? Why? 
Oh, I see now what you did in the arsenal. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, Tariq, did you change the bullets on purpose? For what reason? The gun in that state. If you hold it with a human hand and fire it, then their hand would fucking blow up. Your hand will never be safe. When I listen to those words just now, I see a very similar wound I remember in my mind. Uh-huh. Yes, the source is clear. Haruhiko's right hand. I understand now. Haruhiko was hit by the explosion of the pistol that Kinja was holding right now. That evidence was also in the arsenal. That proof is... Uh, well, I mean, it would either be the ruptured right hand or the severed fingers, I guess. Let's just try that. Nope, it's not that. Damn. Maida was so embarrassed by his mistake that he started speaking a different language. Okay. Is it not that either? What then? Huh? Oh. Pff. The destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Duh. Yeah, that's right. It was in the arsenal. The fragments of a gun filled with blood, which appeared to have burst from the inside. Yeah, I saw it too. Haruhiko fired the gun wrongly loaded, just like this gun. And the gun he was holding exploded, and his hand ended, be ended up being ruptured. Then Otori-kun did this to Gabashikawa-kun. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sure this gun's the one I touched, but I don't know about the other destroyed gun. Hmm, you admitted it. The fact that he touched the gun. Uh, uh, no. No, no. Of course, there are two guns with misloaded bullets. It's a little weird, but I'm certain, Teria, you definitely did something. Is that really it? I think if we pry a little more, you'll end up confessing everything. Uh, uh, don't treat people as criminals without solid evidence. Even if I put my hands on the gun, it can't be proof that I'm a killer. So I don't know anything. Give me the proof! Evidence! It can't be denied that Teria is the most powerful suspect right now, but is there any more solid evidence? If we keep discussing, we might see something we haven't considered before. Okay. Uh, yeah. X to scan, maintain press while scanning the yellow words and record the bullet. Remember that's only one true scan bullet. If you scan the wrong one, you won't be able to record it. Okay. Yep. The Hangman's Gambit isn't translated here. Ah, okay. I guess I'll have to grab the solution in a second before we continue. I don't know anything. It's already been revealed. Stop lying and tell the truth. You went to the arsenal. You deliberately loaded the gun wrongly so that the bullets would explode. But only doing that doesn't mean I'm the culprit, does it? Of course you loaded the gun. You can say it doesn't make you the culprit, but the killer loaded the bullets on purpose. I'm certain of this. That's far-fetched. I'm not a killer. Because I did that one thing, you're treating me as a culprit. You knew the gun was going to explode. What more evidence do you want to see? Oh, Torikun, how could you? Uh, I should have noticed. The moment you asked us to pick a victim, pen and paper was given by you. You murderer! Hmm. It's certain that Terrio went to the arsenal at dawn and secretly manipulated a gun, but is that really all there is? Did they sneak at dawn just to do that one action? Let's think about it. If we listen to everyone's statements, we'll be able to uncover another track of Hart and Terrio's deeds. Huh. Okay. I guess... Oh, wait. Shit. Yeah, I had to be over it. Damn it. Okay. Uh, I can really only think to absorb that one, though, because I don't think Terry's other statement really, like, means that much. Yeah. 
Okay. Give me, give me pen and paper. Try this. Nope. Huh. Okay, well, while I'm hanging here, by the way, let me actually go ahead and get that pulled up. again where I downloaded this. Yeah, it was on Itch.io. That's right. I think the Itch.io page has... Yes, the Flash Anagram. Okay. Oh my god. Ads. Sorry guys. Give me just a second. What are these ads, dude? Okay, that's that's going to be kind of difficult to get, but <laughs> I guess Yeah, I'm not what sure exactly what to do about this one, to be honest. I mean, unless it's just like, unless Kinjo's blue is complete, completely irrelevant. Yeah, if I if I get it wrong again, then like maybe uh, June, but uh, I want to check this real quick first. Okay, so ig ignore Kinjo, and then try that. Okay, yeah, that was it. Cool, cool. I guess Kinjo's was. Irrelevant then. Fair enough. That's it. The paper and pen. What? After listening to Tyra's words, I thought about it. At the beginning of the trial, you guys remember the letter that you said when you were blaming Satsuki? I've been thinking it's been weird all this time. How did the culprit write this letter? We should have lost all of our- Oh yeah! Oh shit, that's right! <laughs> We should have lost all of our belongings at the same time when we were in the ballroom. Hearing that, yeah, how did... Oh! Yes, exactly as Maida says. Perhaps the night before the murder, there was someone who secretly handed out a piece of paper, and they had been secretly showing a paper to ask someone to choose two victims. <laughs> it's obvious at this point that Teria clearly said that at the time, the extra paper and pen were not removed from his clothes. That means Teria is the only one of us who has a paper and pen in their belongings. Uh, don't joke around! You could have accidentally found another piece of paper and wrote in it! Oh, is that so? Should we check it then? Monokuma, bring that letter. I knew that would happen, so I brought it in advance. Here! Now, without that guy making a commotion, let's read it. This must be... It's the same paper Teria had. 
And then Otorikun was the one who sent that letter to Kabashikawakun's room? Oh, wait a minute, you're forcing me. I handed out a bunch of papers to you guys. Soon after that, when Kinjo made a fuss, he might have gotten one in the massive confusion. If it's only paper, it might be possible. But what about your side? Your side? Terrius said it was with his own words. There's only one pen. No matter how much paper you had, you can't write a letter without a pen. The pen was also in the confusion. Hmm. Then that means you don't have the pen right now, because you said you only have one. If we look into your belongings and the party clothes you wore, you won't have any complaints, right? Uh, that's not allowed! Why not? Is there something we shouldn't see? Uh... It's decided, then. You can't refute it anymore. He wrote a letter by calling out Haruhiko and misloading a bullet to let his hand be ruptured. All of this. That's what you did, Teruya. Really? You... Otori-kun? Why? Why? Why did you do that? Why did you kill Kaboshikawa-kun? Uh, I'm sorry. All, all you said was right. After all, you couldn't stand the hunger, too. What else could someone do otherwise? Actually, there was a reason I was aiming at Haruhiko. And there was a reason for when we fought each day. It was all because of the hunger. Yeah, this is so quick that I kind of can't help but wonder if, uh, if there's more to this, obviously, yeah. <clears throat> otori -kun. So what? Were you hoping for sympathy? Either way, you planned the murder and executed it. No, I have nothing to say. I don't want to make any excuses and dishonor Haruhiko anymore. I'm gonna die anyways. Wait, there's one thing I'm curious about. Why did you go to the arsenal before the victim, work with the gun, write a letter to call him, then go back again to the arsenal? Uh, my plan was to originally summon Haruhiko, then see him go into the arsenal and I'd go with him. As if it had nothing to do with the criminal, Haruhiko and I were supposed to fight, and then provoke him and letting him shoot me with the gun I'd prepared. Once that happens, his hand would fly away without knowing anything, and so he would die. In the past, I followed my papa to study guns in America. Then I decided to commit a crime by using the knowledge I gained at the time. So I went back to my room and watched to see Haru coming out, but I was too tired, so I fell asleep till morning came. In the end, I don't know the reason why Haru broke his hand, but in any case, it was my fault. The fact that I killed Haruhiko still doesn't change. This was... Uh difficult answer to even predict. I'm glad you're a stupid fool. In a way, Kurokawa, who was watching the corridor all day, all morning, I think that was a good thing. And my crime, thanks to that, my crime was discovered. Tyria. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as Depressed Cupcake is saying, the hand was probably Terria, but what about the bullet in his chest? Because Terria left Haru alone, and Haru just left with a gaping wound in his chest to find Satsuki, and Satsuki said nothing. Yeah, like... Obviously, more is going on here. Uh, I do believe that Terrio was probably responsible for the hand thing, but uh, I don't think he was responsible for uh, the death. The discussion so far has ended with the conclusion that Terrio is the culprit? It seems like a long shot, I think. There's still a lot of unsolved questions. Wait a minute. I've been listening all this time. Something's wrong with this. Terrio is not the culprit. Satsuki-chan, what are you talking about? Otori-kun just admitted it. I mean, the culprit is me. Are you still saying that? I told you to shut up. Wait, is Teria really the culprit? Yeah, yep. I think she was being straight up from the beginning to be completely honest with you. She just didn't know about the letter because she didn't know about Teria's whole thing. Fuck. Damn it. Even Mikiko-chan? If I'm right, Terry is not the culprit. There's still an unsolved mystery. What are you guys talking about? I'm the culprit, aren't I? I'm almost 90% certain Terry is, Terry is the culprit, but it's still a little early to end the trial. I agree there's an unsolved mystery left. If we try to vote without anyone speaking up like this, I would have tried to do it, but... Actually, this is the most important part of the case right now. Huh? Huh? 
What's this all of a sudden? Wasn't the trial ending like this? That's right. If we think about it carefully, there are still a lot of parts that cannot be explained on the contents of the discussion. But I'd like to hear why Kurikawa thinks Terry is not the culprit. You weren't careful enough, even for Kinjo. What? Nothing. Anyway, if you listen to the explanation, you'll know right away. Gunshot chest wound, flash and smoke grenades, wood flank, and Terria's behavior. Okay. Why do you think Terria isn't the culprit? When Terria passed the door to my room, he sent a letter to Haruhiko. Afterwards, he went inside the arsenal for his next plan. That is the explanation so far. But after that, Terria passed the door to my room again. There was no movement until the morning after. But they were... Even if Terria did plot something, even if Haruhiko's hand was exploded, the direct cause of death is a gunshot wound. True, Terria didn't mention that he used the gun himself. If Terria, who came out of the arsenal before Haruhiko, could not kill... And one more thing, the arsenal was blocked from the inside. That's true. Does anyone know about this? Uh, yeah, then I guess it's wood plank on that. Probably. Uh-huh, yep, yeah, that's what it is, probably. Okay. 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 The wood plank. Are you referring to this, Kurokawa? That's right, Maida. You mean the broken wood plank that fell near the arsenal door? Yeah, according to Maida, he opened the arsenal door in the morning with Teria's help. You're not going to say just because they opened the door together he's not the culprit, are you? That's not it. Think about it. After Teria entered and left the arsenal in the morning, Haruhiko entered afterwards. Until this moment, the door to the arsenal was open. Then, when was the door blocked with the wood planks? That's a good point. Well, when was it? It is for a fact when that Kobashikawa can open the door and went in. Doesn't that mean that the door was blocked after that? That's true. But according to Dark Circle's testimony, Terio Otori did not enter, even enter the arsenal after doing his little scheme. In other words, Terio wasn't the only one who blocked the door with the wood plank. Or wasn't the one, rather. It's only natural. When I tried to open the door with Maida this morning, I was embarrassed to note that the arsenal, which had only been opened, was not opening. As I said before, you must pass by Kurikawa's room. Even if you don't, you can head to the arsenal door. After that, the door, to, the door to the arsenal was opened one more time. At that time, Terria finished his plan. That's impossible. Since Haruhiko was the last one to enter, the arsenal door has been opened only once. If Terria went in and out of the arsenal, I should have heard the sound twice. Well, for starters, the wood plank was used to clasp the door, I guess. If you do something like this from the inside, won't you be able to come out? That's true. But even if you put a plank by some trick from outside, there wasn't just one plank. You know what I'm talking about, right, Maida? There wasn't just one plank. Yes, I saw it clearly. The thing that fell with the plank near the door, at the same time it fell to the ground as soon as the plank was crushed and made a loud noise. That thing was... Yep, it was the... Flash and smoke grenades. Right, the objects that were separated from the plank. You mean the flash and smoke grenades, right? Flash and smoke grenades? Uh, is the, are those things, are those the things that were near the door? Yes, when Teria and I first opened the door, we heard a shattering sound from the inside, and immediately afterwards, a tremendous amount of light and noise hit us. And then, after a few moments, when we opened our eyes, the arsenal was filled with smoke. After pulling out the plank from the handle, the door was opened, and the plank fell because of the effort we did. That's right. Now you see, it's impossible to block the door like that from the outside. What? Then are you saying Otorikun's not the culprit? Wait a moment. But it was me who wrote the letter and held a, had a gun ready to explode. 
It was the reason Haru saw the gun and then it exploded on his hand. I told you a little while ago. It's true that Haruhiko's right hand was ruptured, but the cause of death was the gunshot wound. Teruya, you only prepared the gun, but you didn't shoot Haruhiko, did you? That's... no. Ah, uh, locked room murder. Honestly though, uh... Hmm, I don't know. I feel like... Because there was... Earlier... Um, part of Kinjo's whole thing was that he was explaining that it was possible that the person didn't die immediately, if I remember correctly. So I don't know, it could have just been Kobashikawa himself that uh, sealed the door before he died. It's possible anyway, but I don't know. It's, it, we'll have to, we'll have to see. <clears throat> Hold it. Terry had an obvious murderous intent. Now it's a contradiction to say that he isn't the culprit. Well, no, not necessarily. What's wrong, Mr. Psycho Cop? Using forceful logic in that way doesn't seem like it would reach an answer like this. Dark Circles is right. I don't think Teruya Otori is the killer either. Then who's the culprit? You're saying it's impossible for Teruya to block a door. However, no one else can do it. That's true. That's the biggest mystery in this case. Uh, so what you're all saying is, in short, in short, it's an impossible crime. Oh hey, we have a we have a a little intermission. All right. Well, uh, since we're taking a little intermission, I am going to take a little BRB. So I will be right back.
All right, everybody. Let's get back to it. <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, take care of a couple things real quick, and I also wanted to get the fan art tags up for Twitter and Tumblr, because if you remember, once again, if you post any fan art related to the streams or otherwise to the tag, hashtag NesmeVA stream on Twitter or Tumblr, I will check the tag and show anything that's new in it at the end of each stream. And you can feel free to put stuff there on a non-stream day for me to catch on a stream day as well. So, without further ado, let's get back to the proceedings. Uh, Kobazing asking, what was the break music? That uh, track is called Door, and it is from Higurashi, the visual novel version. So if you look up Door from Higurashi, then you should find it. It is by uh, Preholder, I believe, is the, the artist. <clears throat> All right. An impossible crime? What does that mean? Uh, no, not, not, hold on. Uh, Higurashi, PK Spade. It's literally what it means. The incident happened, but no one in this state is capable of causing the incident itself. That can't be. I can affirm. There's no such thing as an impossible crime in this world. Wow, Kinjo ready to solve the Uminyako murders. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, no, I don't know. I don't think that I don't think that uh, Kenjo's the type of person who could do it. I agree with this. There's no unsolved problem in the world. When a result has happened, it means that there was a series of processes. Then this case, how do you explain it? To assert that this was an impossible crime, you gave up on the case. There's a secret that has not yet been solved where your thoughts don't reach to the end. But if neither Kinjo-kun and Mikaru, who always knew the critical points of the case, weren't confused enough to say that, it's already a mystery that can't be solved? Shut up. Do I look like I'm panicking right now? Sorry, but it looks like that. It's been a few days now, but these days Kinjo-kun's not Kinjo at all. Just like Maida-kun before coming to the ballroom. You're being very annoying, damned criminal. Kinjo, why are you saying that? It's not really like you to get emotional so easily. Ignore it. We're on a trial. This is a life or death war. If you take care of someone who loses their temper during a war, you'll have to go through them. There's no other option. This person or that person. I'm done. Again, this case isn't an, ov un uh, uh, isn't an unresolved crime. Let's organize the information. Kinjo. First, even if we put on hold Terry's claim that the crime is impossible, it will be necessary to look at the case from a different point of view. A different point of view? In retrospect, all of the reasoning we've done so far is based on Kurikawa's testimony. Let's step back here for a moment. Has anyone ever seen Kurikawa spying on the hallway? What? What do you mean? In short, Kurikawa's testimony is not too blind, but are Kurikawa's words 100% true? She would be hungry in extreme circumstances. Would she bear with that bear that with that in mind? Lastly, there could be a possibility that Kurikawa was the culprit. When that idea comes up, she could be playing with all of us. All of us. Kinjo. Hey, did you went, did you go crazy? Did you really flip around that fast? That's stuff that comes from your mouth. What? I'm talking about possibilities. At the time of Tomori's murder, during Kinjo's testimony. You put a thread on our private room doors to prove our alibis. But that was evidence that no one else knew other than Kinjo. It's the same story. It's different from that. What I've been doing at the time is what I've been doing before the incident. And this is just simply what you've seen and heard testimony. It is meaningless to condemn the truth or falsehood in the testimony. Did you forget what you said? It's utterly disappointing, Surugi Kinjo. Even though I was thinking you were just a crazy guy, I admitting, admitted your reasoning skills, but now you've stopped thinking with your head. But since the situation's quite desperate, isn't Kinjo trying to do everything he can? Kurikawa, is there way, no way to prove it? Your testimony, I mean. I don't know why I have to do this. Why not ask Satsuki or Teruya? Huh? You've heard about my testimony? Teruya admitted that he entered the arsenal a while ago. What about Satsuki? Uh, if I was out at dawn, well, like Kurikawa said, since I'm the killer above top, of course I wandered around at dawn. Even if we ignore the backstory, Dark Circle's testimony is reliable in its own right now. I, if I were you, I would have known that right away, without ha having to do this cumbersome work. You're noisy. As long as your reasoning hits a wall, it's a way to do what you can. <laughs> you admitted with your own words that your reasoning was blocked now? That's funny. Be quiet, Meikaru. You're on the same level as we are right now. Do you think you're in a position to mock others now? That's enough! How come Kurikawa can have this powerful voice in a class trial? Everyone, don't get worked up. Since this is a difficult case, we need to regain stability more than usual. So let's calm down and look back again, again from the beginning. There must be something that we missed. Sorry. As Maida says, I was getting too excited. I apologize. Huh? Then, uh, Terio Tori is not the culprit. I'm sure up to this point. Even if that's true, we'll have to double check. Terio, are you really sure you sent a letter to Haruhiko and loaded the bullets? Uh, well, yes. I'll say, I still can't believe I'm not the culprit. I didn't really read the Monokuma file properly, so in a hurry, I saw the right hand ruptured, so I guessed I was the one who did it. That probably isn't a lie. Teria really thought he was the killer. 
He said a little while ago, as if confessing, he told us he was going to be executed. It's not likely, but something came to my head. Can I speak? Go ahead. An accomplice, or in fact, there were two culprits. Dismissed. Anyway, all opinions from your brain like that are what? I didn't even expect it. Rubbish opinions like that. Story not worth considering. Anything like that, just crumple it, take it out of your brains, and throw it into the trash. That's unfair. I said that because I was thinking in my own way. If Teruya had an accomplice, there would have been a person who objected at the time of him being accused as the culprit. Even if not, Teruya would have confessed everything and made a mistake in the end. But what if there was a real criminal and pointed out Otori-kun as the culprit? Everyone except the real culprit dies, right? Can't you think about a development like the culprit used, used Otori-kun? Oh, you're using your head. But that wouldn't be it. Even if a culprit secretly works behind Teruya Otori to cover up his sins, it's impossible to work without him because of the limited circumstances of the arsenal. And even there is, even there is an accomplice. If we believe using Kurokawa's testimony, the only suspect remaining is Yurinami, so she can't be. Huh? Wait a minute. I have a thought that something passed like a flash in my head just now. No, I'm the real culprit. You're relentless. Why are you claiming to be the killer? You don't know anything about this case. The more you claim to be the culprit, the more you claim your innocence. You still don't notice? <laughs> Spaceman Scott. Y'all remember the time Monokuma squared off against Blue from Blue's Clues and got annihilated? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. The, the greatest fight in all of anime. We all remember this. Let's organize our thoughts. First, Teruya is not the culprit. He didn't shoot. What Teria did was call Haru by using a letter, and make a trap that explodes the gun by misloading a bullet. And the person who killed Haruhiko himself. In other words, what the real culprit did, what Teria didn't do, that is. Grabbing a gun to kill Haruhiko, messed up the interior of the arsenal, and finally locked the door with the plank and grenades. Teria doesn't know what the real culprit did. If we think like that, conversely, does the culprit know what Teria did? No, the real culprit wouldn't know what Teria did. As Mykaro said earlier, what Teruya did was unknown to anyone since he was in the closed space of the arsenal, unless the culprit directly sees it or Teruya tells them in advance. Hmm. Then who is the killer? Wait, guys, there's something I want to check for a moment. Maida. Before, Kur before Kurikawa watched during the morning, from that point on, what if someone was hiding inside the arsenal? Could there be such a case? No, I don't think it would happen. Kinja was tied up, and I saw Taira going to the room before. Mikaru. The last time she went into the empty room, to the left of the dance hall, she didn't exit the room at all. When did you see this? Well, you're right. I was investigating the empty room all day long. Then, there are only two suspects that Kurokawa has seen, and they don't know what each one have done. In other words, the real culprit doesn't know that Haruhiko received the letter, and they don't know why their hand was ruptured. But for some reason, Haruhiko was shot with a gun and killed. There's someone who could fit the conditions right now. That turned themselves at the start of the trial. That turned themselves at the start of this trial. They entered in the suspect view since they moved at dawn, and no one else can commit a crime at this stage. But is this person really the culprit? If so, why in the world? I really can't think of anyone other than Satsuki to be completely honest with you. So like, I feel like I just have to. God! Fuck! Man! I knew it was coming, but I didn't want to believe it! Oh, man. All of you guys won't want to admit it, but I think I know now. The identity of the culprit. What? Maida-kun, you know the killer? The person who satisfies all the conditions as the true culprit of this case. It can only be you, Satsuki. What? Is Satsuki's the killer? <sighs> Hooray! You finally came to think of me as the culprit. Only Yuki understands me. I'm so glad. Wait, Maida, look at her now. She was picked as the culprit, but she looks rather content. Do you really think that Satsuki is the culprit? Think about it. The only one who can possibly do this is Satsuki. 
At the beginning of the trial, when Satsuki came out saying she was the culprit, we were trying to interrogate her to see if she really was. However, Satsuki had no idea of the letter that called Haruhiko in his destroyed right hand, which we thought the culprit would know. Of course, so we thought because of these reasons that she wasn't the real culprit. But take a look. The two things mentioned earlier are actually from Teria's doing, not the culprit's. Teria didn't know there was someone who killed Haruhiko by shooting him with a separate gun. So on the contrary, did the culprit know that Teria sent a letter and destroyed his hand? Probably not. It would be impossible to know Teria's actions unless he himself told the culprit in advance. Then the real culprit would be a person who doesn't know why the letter was sent to Haruhiko's room and his right hand exploded, even though they didn't know why his hand ended up that way. And there's someone who meets these conditions, the person who confessed with their own voice that they killed Haru by shooting them, but didn't mention about the right hand nor the letter. And that person is Satsuki. Uh, well, I'm not sure what you're saying because it's difficult. But anyways, that's right. It was me. I killed Haruhiko. I think Maidakun's reasoning makes sense, but I don't really understand Satsuki-chan's appearance being like that. Why did you do this, Satsuki-chan? Why do you like it so much when you're being named as a killer? Kawashikawa-kun, who is close to Satsuki-chan, with her own hands. How can you say it so lightly that you killed him? Weren't you sad? Think again, incompetent. Of course it's possible to commit the crime as you said. There's only that woman, but that is no absolutely not the reaction of a killer. I'm not crazy. It's very normal. Actually, I don't know why Satsuki reacts like that and keeps saying that she's the culprit. However, I can't think of any other reasoning. Midas' words make sense. In fact, at the time, Teru was not found to be the killer. It was enough to doubt Satsuki because of the circumstances. Maybe, as soon as the trial began, Satsuki couldn't be the culprit. We were stuck in stereotypes, and we didn't think about it more, th more thoroughly. Satsuki, I'll check once more. Are you the culprit? Haruhiko, you killed him with a gun in your hand? Yeah, that's right. I'm the killer. Wait, if you're the real culprit, can you explain why you're so positive? You were like the one constantly appealed to him as the culprit. I don't know. Just when the trial started, it became bothersome to make excuses. So that's why I confessed. Now if it's decided, go ahead and execute me. If you sound so refreshingly like that, it doesn't sound like you, it doesn't look like you're a criminal. On the contrary. I have my doubts too. In the first place, Satsuki-chan really doesn't have the personality to kill. Even though she's resolute to this point, like Mikaru said, it would rather seem like we're choosing the wrong killer and we're gonna die together. And that's not it at all. I was just telling the truth. What do I do? It's hard to make sure after identifying the killer. This attitude Satsuki has. It's a reaction that defies understanding, like Mikaru said. Even like this, can I still point at Satsuki as the culprit? Honestly, like, having played Satsuki's free time events, though, like, it does kind of make sense to me a little bit when I think about it. Because Satsuki is really, like, her whole, like, okay, sorry to, like, break up the trial for a second, but, like, I, I kind of want to talk about this for a second. Um... The, the, one of the biggest things about Satsuki's free time events focuses around the fact that she was sent to the school not because she was actually the most fit for that role, but because it was a way to have something that differentiated her and made her actually look competent and like, like she was worth something in her family. Her family, which barely ever paid attention to her, who only ever viewed her as, you know, sort of ancillary to their whole operation. Uh, their sort of a, a collective where you have to stand out in order to be worth something. And so sending her to Hope's Peak was the best way to do that. Um, so Satsuki has a really like very low sense of self-worth from what she talks about. Like she, she makes it very like matter of fact. She's just very like upfront about it. But like ultimately she doesn't think very much of herself at all. She doesn't really think that she has much utility to anyone. Um, so in this sense, like, if, if they're put in this situation where the only thing that can save everybody is to take a fall, then, like, it, it seems pretty obvious to me that Satsuki is the type of person in that situation to think, well, I don't really offer anything to this group, uh, but I could offer myself up for the group, and then that will be better for everybody. Uh, yeah, it, oh, man. 
<laughs> That's actually like really sad. It's it's kind of almost like a a mix of like chapter four from uh, Danganronpa one and two in a sense. It kind of it gives uh it gives Nidai's uh and Gundam's thoughts as well, kind of like the the sacrificing yourself for the greater good kind of thing. Yeah, damn. Fucked up. <laughs> Everyone stop. Why are you thinking about a crime is possible, but the reaction is weird? Wake up already. The crime is impossible, even for Satsuki. Why is that? But Kinjo, based on the testimony by Kurakawa, Haruhiko, Teria, and Satsuki entered the arsenal at dawn. Of them, Teria was the first to come out of the arsenal, and, the Haruhiko, and Har Haruhiko entered the arsenal because he was walking through the corridor with Satsuki just before this point. If they entered the arsenal together, then that means... Perhaps it was at this time that Haruhiko used the gun, and this is likely to be true just by looking at the sounds of the arsenal opening, and Satsuke coming out alone from the corridor. This also would make sense why the door was blocked off, because if Satsuke is the one who did this, and did it specifically for that reason, then, I mean, Kobashikawa is like the person she's closest to in this group. So of course, like, I would imagine, even if he's maybe not necessarily in on it, he would still probably understand it and would be willing to block off the door uh, in a way to like try to make it look like she ha would have no way to get out of the room. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. Well, we'll see, but um, yeah. Hmm. Back off, Maida. You said it with your own words just now. Satsuki kills Haruhiko and gets out of the arsenal all alone. If she came out, how did she lock the door then? Ah. Uh. It's a clue that you guys found and checked yourselves, right? It's impossible to block the door from the outside in that way. If so, the killer was in the arsenal at least until Maida and Teria opened the door. However, Satsuki came out of the arsenal before this. Does this sound like she could still be the killer? Uh, I just explained it, Kinjo. Why don't you uh, peer behind the fourth wall and, uh, and understand my words? <laughs> don't waste my time. <laughs> and if you look at Satsuki's reaction, that girl used a weapon, but it seems she doesn't know that the arsenal was blocked. So now what? Is Satsuki a ninja now? I mean, ninja clown would be pretty based. Not gonna lie. Personally, I love the way that this crime exists in Kinjo's blind spot. Yes, uh, it, it actually does uh, quite quite nicely, actually, because so much of this case relies on. I mean, at least as I understand it so far, if I'm if I'm comprehending the motive and everything correctly, then like, yeah, it is a crime born of love for other people. Really, it, it is a it is a crime that is necessary to protect people that are important. To Satsuki and Haruhiko. Um, it is something that is done for the greater good to help others, and Kinjo can't comprehend the idea of a crime being done for selfless or even acceptable reasons. No matter what situation has occurred, like what the circumstances have been up until now regarding a crime, he is like completely unable to accept it or understand it or put himself empathetically in the shoes of a person who does a crime. So like, so you know, uh, in, in this case it is like, yeah, it's pretty like incomprehensible to him. It's against everything he believes in. That's, mm, this is uh, this is good shit. I like this. Uh, what was that again? Oh, oh wait, I know. Maybe you don't know, but what if you use the plank of wood as a barricade? It seems you were asleep during the trial. How about it? Is there anyone who still thinks Satsuki is the culprit? After listening to Kinjo, it seems that Satsuki really isn't the culprit. In the end, the problem lies with the arsenal door being blocked. If we solve this, there should be no problem even if Satsuki is the culprit. Even if you think about it again, it's impossible to put a wood plank inside the arsenal from the outside with grenades on it. There's no time frame at all. Wow, Mekaru doesn't get it either. Truly without love it cannot be seen, chat. I think the current prerequisites were all wrong. The public here probably won't solve this mystery. I'd rather go back from the very beginning and reorganize the case instead. Well, that sounds nice and all, but I hate it when the trial is taking too long, don't you? It's not a warning, but you'd better wrap things up soon. The alibis have done. 
Kurokawa's testimony, Teruya's behavior, the wood plank that blocked the arsenal, and Satsuki's incomprehensible reactions. Maybe. Have we missed something else? Why does Satsuki have that attitude in the first place? Even Kinjo seems to be confused. Our reasoning is at the very core right now. I think Kinjo is right, blocking the door to Satsuki. This is a big problem. My mind's getting more and more complicated. Right now, this is the most important aspect of the case. The arsenal door, the wood plank, the grenades. How to block the door from the outside. Wait, you don't need to go back to the start. If you think about it a little, it should become clear. It's another waste of time. Wait a minute. What's the reason for the flash grenade and the smoke screen? At the moment the door opens, if the criminal hidden inside escapes through the light and smoke, then the trick is to block the arsenal from the inside as solved. But I'm afraid not, as was already mentioned. It's ridiculous when you think about Dark Circle's testimony at the very beginning. It's been seen that Teddy Otori and Satsuki Urinami, both of them came out of the arsenal. Inside the arsenal, the last one who came out was Satsuki. It was Satsuki, I'm sure. But opening the door and coming out of the arsenal means the door was not blocked until that last moment. Well, in a word, doesn't that mean that the body of Haruhiko was left alone in the arsenal until just before Maida and I opened the door together in the morning? What does that... It doesn't make sense. It wasn't that the body was alive and blocked the door alone. No, this is starting to sound creepy somehow. Huh? Tyra, wait a second. What did you just say? Eh? That it started to get creepy. Not that. Before that. Is the body moved and blocked the door? Like a zombie from a movie? Well, of course it won't. Such health science is... Unscientific. It's like that bear in front of our very eyes. It's unscientific. Hey, what the heck did you just say? I'll have you know I'm a cutting-edge science project product. The body moved and blocked the door? Of course. A reality like that does not exist. But as Teria said earlier, it was Haru alone who remained in the arsenal until the end. No way. Could it be? The person who blocked the door to the arsenal. That person's identity is... Yep! 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 Alright. Now I have to look at the... I have to look at the, the symbols here to get this. This is gonna be kinda hard. Give me strength, chat. Okay. Alright, alright. Where's, where's the first one? There it is. Take it. Okay. Uh, eh. Eh, come on. Okay, there we go. Uh, the next. Okay. Uh, that. Fuck. Come back. Come back, please. Come back, please. 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 There it is. Okay. Got that. Uh, da -da -da -da. Got it. Um. Got it. And it says Haruhiko Kobashikawa. That's it. It has to only be him. The identity of the person who blocked the door to the arsenal. Really? Maida-kun, do you know who the killer is? I don't think you're about to say it was Kobashikawa-kun just because the body moved, right? I was just joking. No, thanks to Tyra, I could come up with something else. That's right. The only one who could block the door, the arsenal door was no no one else other than Haruhiko. Eh? Huh? Haruhiko's the culprit? You're saying he committed suicide? Wait, have you forgotten? As Monokuma said, suicide is forbidden. And if you kill yourself in any way or form, they'll treat it as a dog death. Haruhiko was murdered by someone other than himself. That's why Monokuma treated this as a case and a class trial was held like this. No, Maida never said that he committed suicide. He said the person who blocked the door to the arsenal was Haruhiko. What? Like Maida said, the person who killed Haruhiko with a gun is the killer, Satsuki. But it was impossible for Satsuki, the task of blocking the arsenal, but was possible for Haruhiko. How about it? This means the reason why Satsuki can't be the culprit. It's now gone. No. That can't be possible. 
that the fact that Haruhiko blocked the door to the arsenal, it's just a simple assumption. That may be possible in context, but there's no evidence for this. No evidence? No, there's proof of this. I don't mean ill will just because Haru blocked the door without any evidence. But Kinjo wouldn't be aware of this evidence. Why does he argue so much? No, let's not bother right now. The first, now the case comes first. The evidence that Haru may have blocked the arsenal door is... Um... Evidence that he blocked the arsenal door? Well... I guess it would probably be... Either, like... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess it could be Kinjo's testimony or it could be the blood trail. I'm gonna try that and see. Yeah, okay, it was the blood trail. There's evidence. It's the blood. Blood? The blood that splattered in the arsenal. Everyone has seen it, right? Didn't you think it was a little strange looking? Oh, it certainly felt a little weird. It felt like, well, you know, like it was a road made by blood rather than a blood spot. That's right. It looks like bloodstains wandering around in the arsenal. After Haruhiko was shot, wouldn't, expl wouldn't it explain he was bleeding while looking for boards, flash, and smokescreen grenades? It's plausible, but would it be compelling that Haruhiko Kabashikawa himself locked the door of the arsenal simply by looking at his blood? It's not reasoning, but a realm of speculation. But it's not a contradiction. Only Haruhiko has a certain possibility, and even if the culprit dragged the body, there's no reason for it. Only leaves evidence behind. No, it is a contradiction. Kinjo. I concede that all of Maida's words were all true, but Haruhiko was murdered by a very cruel killer. Let me ask a simple question. Why in the world would the victim help elaborating more tricks for the killer, if not to leave evidence of their crime? The answer is, you don't know about that. But if you wander around about emotional things and look only at the information left in the case, it makes sense that it is Haruhiko that just closed the door, even with the process of elimination method. This is not about being emotional. This is about the victim helping the killer. There can't be such a thing. Stockholm Syndrome? I don't believe in any of that crap. That kind of thing is psychotic. Even that requires the premise that the killer has some kindness and gentle behavior towards their victim. But does this reflect reality? Did the killer show kindness to Haruhiko? No, rather they murdered them in cold blood. Maida's reasoning is the worst, not to mention forced and far-fetched. Hey, what is this Stockholm Syndrome? It's when victims are held hostage by a robber or kidnapper, but rather they think of them as their saviors. It's like a phenomenon that antagonizes rescuers, police, etc., and they take the criminal side. Kinjo, it's weird. If you were the usual, you would rather have ruled out such emotional things and reasoned it out by considering the logical situations. You said I was being emotional? This is natural! You just don't see it. If the victim who deserves salvation agrees to the obvious evil, it becomes impossible to reason with. This choice is not logical here. Saving them is what I have to do. I can't leave alone your pretentious reasoning. And besides that, there are loopholes in Midas' reasoning. I'll just do what I have to do. I'll refute you. Oh boy, here we go! It's the showdown! I'll correct that ridiculous reasoning, Maida. What the hell are you doing, Kinjo? You know it's best that there's no more to refute here! You're making an unacceptable reasoning from my point of view. That can't happen! And it shouldn't happen! And if there's anything to refute... Then I'll do it, Maida. Oh boy. All right. R remind me of the control. No! <laughs> Damn it! Oh well. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Notorious testimony. Gunshot wounds. Chest area. Kurikawa's testimony. Kinjo's testimony. Cut fingers. Okay. <laughs> Say something that makes sense, Maida. Oh, wait, shit, right. No. Why does the victim ha become a ki helper for the killer? Besides, if you listen to Irinami... Ah, shit. She tried to kill Haru by herself. She said she shot in self-defense. It's not enough to leave more clues on the culprit. 
Jeez, I completely forgot the uh, controls, to be completely honest with you. Uh, what does this say? <laughs> You can't even translate the retry options? <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna have to pull up like fucking Google Translate camera or something. Get to, what does this say? Would you like to try again? Well, what? Okay, hold up. Okay, yeah, like, that means yes, but the bottom says something about saving. Am I, or, or does it mean go back to your last save? Because I don't want to go back to my last save. It says save and quit. Uh, just say yes. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah, okay. We have to- we have to go through this again. Okay, I need to, like, look up the controls for this again, because I really do not remember them. Is it on the Itch.io page? It is not on the Itch.io page. Uh... Shit. I'm not finding a controls list anywhere. <laughs> Does anybody remember the controls of this mini game? I'm really sorry to hold us up like this, but I really don't want to just like die a million times. I know I swipe with the arrows. Z for the- yeah, I know that. I couldn't figure out how to uh, change my evidence, though. I was hitting control and it didn't do anything, though. I was hitting shift too, and it wasn't doing anything. Come on, get through, get through your thing. Try with another shift if you didn't try one of them. I, I could do that. I could try S, yeah. When we get to the, uh, the, the little thing, I might also try to, yeah. I'm gonna look at 
this through the translate camera again in a second just to see if that tells me anything. Okay, so... So what does this say? Counter-argument showdown is a blah blah blah... Rescan the text, please. <laughs> Players can press the decision key to refute the opponent's words, just like in non-stop debates. Yellow text can be refuted by pressing the shift key. Okay. You can change the clue swords like changing bullets with the left and right arrow keys. Having to use the right sword for the right contradictions like the non-stop debates. Okay. The shift keys is useless for plain white text and the decision key Cuts down words in order that the opponent speaks. Here too, if you reflect incorrect text, your HP will be reduced. Okay. Well. All right. Then yeah. It's the arrow keys, it's left and right arrow keys, I guess, to change the thing. Yeah, it sure does. Okay. Go for it! Kurikawa's testimony, Kinjo's testimony. Besides, if you listen to if you listen to Irunami, she tried to kill Haru by herself. She said she shot in self-defense. Okay, keep going. If it's not enough to leave more clues on the culprit, why would they help the killer with his own death? No. Okay, progress. However, it's impossible for Satsuki to block the door to the arsenal. Tsurugi, you know this, right? At that point, it was only Haruhiko in the arsenal who could have done this. The unnatural bloodstains support this fact. Those are just blood spots. It's possible the killer moved the body. First, Haruhiko was shot in the chest. Without seeing anything. Instant death. No! That's wrong! That's wrong! You said that that was wrong! You told me yourself earlier that that was not the case, sir! Fucking got him! Fucking got him! <laughs> uh, Google Lens has gotten good, huh? No, it hasn't gotten very good, but it was enough for me to at least be able to tell. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. That had me on edge. Thanks for sticking with me through that journey, chat. <laughs> Kinjo, that's wrong. Haruhiko did not die immediately. You can say what you want, Maida. As I said, Haruhiko had his chest pierced. Since the bullet hit his body with a wound like that, he would have no choice but to die immediately. No, Haruhiko did not die immediately. His chest was struck with the bullet, but the bullet penetrated through Haruhiko without getting stuck in his body. Because the amount of shock is relatively less than one gets stuck, it would have been possible for him to move. Speculations. Anyone can make that claim. Stop it now, Kinjo! This is not speculation. It was you, Surugi Kinjo, who told me this! <clears throat> Incompetent. Is that true? If it's about the bullet pierced, of course. I'm well aware of it, but... Was it that cop who told you about this? Yes. During the investigation, I thought he had... I thought he had died because he was shot in the chest at first, but Kinjo told me. I heard that his death might not have been immediate, but he could have had trouble breathing, so he was able to move for a little more time. That's... At the time, I just said it as a guess only. Kinjo-kun, why are you arguing so much? In this case, it's like Kinjo-kun is the culprit. We named Satsuki-chan as the culprit, and Kobashikawa-kun did the back work, but why are you still arguing so much? Shut up, criminal! Haruhiko was... murdered. He was also labeled as the victim that I had to protect. A victim who deserved protection was actually on the killer's side? That... something like that. It can't be. Kinjo. Yeah, I can't listen to this far-fetched logic. According to your logic, Kiz Kizuno Tomori was also a victim, but in reality, she was actually a terrifying bitch who was planning a crime. Are you saying that you would tolerate Tomori's murder plan? Th that's... 
wrong. In that case, it was due to an accident, and not the victim. Also, refuting such a subject to the incompetent which it was, Haruhiko Kabashikawa tried to kill Satsuki Iranami. It makes no sense to help him in a situation where it leaves more evidence to the culprit. Ah, but look here. The victim you had to protect was the reverse, toward after trying to kill someone. They're very good citizens indeed. N no No! No! I'm... What the hell am I for? For so many days. Many... For... Kinjo? Oh, shit. K kinjo Kinjo-kun's down! Kinjo, wake up! Kinjo... Hey, hey, hey! Hold it right there! We're still on trial! I don't admit going out of the courtroom at your own will! But Kinjo is... <sighs> uh, this is a headache. Fainting and getting upset during a trial. It's a taboo to get out from the courtroom during the, tri during the trial. Then I guess it can't be helped. Kinjo-kun, I'll take him to the dormitory. You guys don't have to move. Stay in your seats. Damn, he literally blue screened. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. Officer down. <laughs> uh, Stink Flight 3 with the $5. Your performance as Kinjo is, is amazing this chapter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've been waiting for him to have a moment like this. Fuck, this is good. This is, <laughs> this is good. I can't, I can't believe Monica was just like, damn, if it were me, I simply would not have. I just would have been okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been waiting for a while, right? Kinjo could arrived safely to his dorm bed, so don't worry about it and let's continue the trial. But this doesn't make things fun. Now Kinjo kun is outside the courtroom. The fact that he was sent out here means that he wasn't the sent out means that he wasn't the culprit. Now the number of people is decreased by one. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I, I think we already know who the culprit is, Monokuma. <laughs> Kinjo, I'm sure he'll be okay. It's the first time that Kinjo looked like that. As Monokuma said, we're still on trial. Forget about him for now. He's not even dead, is he? All right. Uh, so, uh, where did we leave off? The culprit of Satsuki. She couldn't block the door to the arsenal. Only Haruhiko. Is it okay to make the, this decision then? Does anyone have a different opinion? A different opinion? I think that's the only thing we have. There's no disagreement. Of course, it's logical, as Kinjo Surugi said. I also don't understand why Haruhiko Kabashikawa in, is in the victim's position helped the killer. <laughs> the Monokuma just popping up over my car's face. <laughs> Monokuma jump scare. Uh, but anyway. <clears throat> That's, well, I don't know either. After all, it's like we won't get a different decision now, right? Then if you name me as the culprit, there will be no complaints and no one will be dissatisfied. Wait, not yet. Huh? What else? You said that there was no reason to disagree. Why did Haruhiko Kabashikawa help the killer? And why is this killer so excited? Uh the same goes for me. Satsuki, the reasoning about this case is over. Perhaps only looking at, the re looking at the reasoning result. I can't argue that Satsuki is the culprit. However, why? Why call yourself the killer? Are you trying to die? What? Why, you ask? Well, like I said earlier, it became a nuisance, so... That's a good reason, right? I'm not good at lying, but I think I do better than Satsuki-chan. Don't mess around. You'll be executed if you let this go. But if you die, the truth of this case will remain as a matter that will be... 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 Bleh. Remain as a matter that... I think she's saying it will be unsolved. I will a woman who doesn't give up until I know 100% the problem I've challenged. Please tell us, Satsuki. If you really are the culprit, you have a duty to take responsibility for your actions. Tell me. When I thought I was the culprit, all I could do was get blamed. 
What are you trying to hide? Let us hear it, Satsuki. I don't know! I don't know, I don't know! I'm just the culprit! That's all I am! What? She started shouting. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Baka, 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 baka! Satsuki, as long as she stays like this, we'll have to force you to open your mouth, Satsuki. About the secret of this incident in which Haru was involved, and the reason for your actions in claiming that you were the real culprit all along. All right. Remind me, Anna. Thank you for reminding me what the controls are. Terminating talk shooting, blah, blah, blah. When the speech bubbles of the opponent's remark appear, move the cross here, and yeah. Z to destroy. If it's not destroyed, damage the player. At the top of the bubble, an icon representing the opponent is displayed, and the number of the icon itself the bubble. Okay, and reload with shift. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Okay. These actually get kind of hard, so hopefully uh, we'll won't have too much of a hard time with it. I don't know anything. Baka baka baka. Mida doesn't even notice. Or need to execute me quickly. I don't know anything. The culprit has changed. Mida doesn't even notice. The culprit hasn't changed. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Oh, jeez. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, holy shit. Okay. The reason is over. Everything was explained. You have nothing more to say. Uh... And the book. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, yeah, I got it right. The other pistol that broke Haru's hand. I thought I got that in reverse order for a second, but... The reasoning isn't over yet, Satsuki. Eh? Is it already over? No, it's not. There's one more thing we've overlooked and crossed. Does anyone know? Eh? Was there anything like that? As Satsuki-chan said, wasn't the reasoning over? It's about the pistol that destroyed Haruhiko Kabashikawa's right hand. That's right. Because we decided it was Teria's doing earlier, we went over it. Actually, if you think a little bit, it wasn't Teria that destroyed Haruhiko's right hand. What are you saying? That makes no sense, Maida. I replaced the bullet and Haruhiko grabbed his intended, and his right hand was destroyed. Stupid fool. If what you say is true, the gun he touched should have been shattered as well. Why would it remain intact? Oh, right. Come to think of it, even when Otori-kun was rushed as the culprit, he said he didn't know why it ended up like that. That's right. I was freaking out for excuses. Yeah, that's a good point. When I think about it again, if Haru uses the gun as I intended, the gun should have blown up. Teruya, are you sure you didn't touch the two guns? Right, I can assure you this. Trust me, I only touched one gun unconditionally. Wait a minute, then won't it get even more weird? Unless Teruya kun did it, why did Kobashikawa kun get caught in the same trap Otori kun did and injured his right hand? That can't be deduced by us alone, except for one person, Satsuki. I... I don't know! No, you most likely know why. Satsuki, don't you remember? At the beginning of the class trial, you said Haruhiko tried to shoot you, and then you grabbed a gun and shot him in self-defense and ended up killing him. From here on out, it's just my thoughts. If Satsuki's words were true, wouldn't it have been that Haruhiko knew the gun would explode? Oh, fuck, dude. He knew it was going to explode? Deliberately breaking his hand. Was he trying to commit suicide? Maybe so. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is just unfounded imagination. Just listen for now. I don't know how someone changed the bullets in the same manner that Teruya did, but it probably was Haruhiko himself who did it. Since the second half of the trial, the word suicide continued to rattle. Because this case was just too weird to see it as ordin an ordinary murder scenario. But in the end, Haruhiko did not commit suicide, 
because Monokuma doesn't deal with suicides. Even if he wanted to commit the act, he wouldn't have done it because it ends it, it just ends as a wasted death. So perhaps he thought about it like this. Is Haruhiko trying to save Satsuki? Tried to save her? Oh shit, dude. Deliberately aiming at Satsuki, the gun that explodes when shooting. Surprise, Satsuki shoots in response. Even if she shot the floor, she doesn't get hurt and only his hand fly, hands fly away. And because Satsuki's shot hit him, his death wasn't treated as a suicide. Later, when Satsuki leaves in surprise, he remains alone in the arsenal. He himself does the extra effort to make the case even more complicated. Like, for example, blocking the door to the arsenal and messing with the guns. Well, of course, there's no evidence of this. It's just my imagination. The fact that Haruhiko blocked the door seemed to be trying to help the killer, so I thought about it as a basis. Haruhiko, in order to save Satsuki, means he gave up his life? Fuck, dude. Hold on. That's plausible, but you always finish with the line of your imagination. There's a 0% chance that the incompetent's words are true. Why? I was listening to Maida-kun and I was rather thinking that was the truth. Think first. He gave up his life and tried to save someone else. Humans aren't that simple. They would be afraid to do it. Even in an ordinary circumstance. But it would be even more unreasonable in an extreme situation where there's no food and living like that. Like us. But not long ago, Hatano, for Tyra, she threw away her life. Ayame-chan. That's not the case now. At the time, even the most extreme situation wasn't there, and she didn't save Akane Taira with 100% pure intentions. Did you forget? Ayame Hatano clearly had a desire to save Akane Taira, but she also wanted to escape from here. She committed murder with such a sloppy heart, although she eventually revealed her true face to us. However, in the case of Haruhiko Kabashikawa, like Ayame Hatano, there's not a single reason for themselves, according to the incompetent. He gave up his life 100% purely to only save Satsuki Iranami. No matter how close Haruhiko Kabashikawa was with Satsuki Iranami, it would be absurd to say they were family members and gave up their lives in these extreme circumstances. If that's true, then it deserves my respect. I know. What I said, it was an unfounded idea. You didn't really have to refute it like that. Of course, I'm not saying it's absolutely impossible like that crazy cop. I don't think so. But it is absurd. If he had been thinking of Satsuki Iranami like that, he would have done something earlier. But I don't have a clue. But if Maida-kun's words were wrong, how would you describe the reason for Kabashikawa-kun's right hand? I'll have to think about that more. As expected, it's not going to work out the way I thought. It seems like it's too absurd, as Mikado says, and it's very difficult for someone to make a decision in order to save her life to the point of even giving up his life. Anyways, there's no objections that Satsuki's the culprit, is there? Do we really want to go over Haruhiko's right hand? I'd like this wrapped up as soon as possible. I'm getting bored of it. No, but we have to know the truth of this case. It's true. What? Yuki, are you psychic? It's exactly as if you read someone's mind. What are you talking about? I don't feel like an adult to keep trying to hide it and be a nuisance to all of you. I don't think the trial will ever be over at this rate. And as Yuki said, as long as you commit a murder, you gotta be responsible for it. Satsuki. Where should I start? Oh, yeah, since Kobazin came to my mo room early in the morning. You know, until this moment came, I couldn't imagine how everything played out. Who is it? Kobazin? What's wrong? Going around at dawn like this, he'll get hungry. I think I'm gonna die hungry, then get killed. <laughs> Satsuki, this is not a joke. So listen seriously. I have something to say to you. Huh? Compassing? <laughs> okay, all right. Tell me. It'll take a little time. Follow me for a minute. Kobashikawa? Isn't this the arsenal? Why this place? Satsuki, is your body okay? You haven't eaten anything in a few days now. Is it painful? Eh, yeah, I'm hungry enough to die, but except for that I'm fine. But what's this all of a sudden? It's giving me goosebumps. Actually, I have a favor to ask you. 
Well, what do you want to ask? Kill me. What are you saying? Did you commit a sin for being a perv? <laughs> I get it. It's delightful that Kobazing is lusting for his girls, but it's not enough to kill you. I said I wasn't playing around. Sorry. No, it was my bad. Sorry. I shouted out of nowhere. Ah, damn it. How do I explain this? Kobashikawa, are you about to die? I've been thinking all this time. When this division was born, it was our fault, right? Even if we had a little more food left, it wouldn't have been so serious. I can't deny it. Besides, until now, Kinjo was guarding the arsenal, so no murder occurred. But eventually, Kinjo went crazy. No one is guarding the arsenal right now. If we don't make a decision now, someone will definitely commit a murder. So that's what Kabashikawa wants to say. Okay. You mean that the two of us who are the most guilty will take responsibility? Honestly, I didn't want to involve you. It was me who first suggested to eat the food. I wanted to end up by dying if I could. But I remembered Monokuma's words. A murder case must happen in order to escape. The ballroom. And suicide's not accepted. In the end, you can't solve it alone. So you need someone's help, but... The person who helps you will also be bound to being executed for being the culprit. So I'll be in risk of death too. Yeah. I have no other person to suggest. Only Teruya or you who committed the same crime. But you know, me and him are in bad ways right now. Of course, I have no intention of recommending this, but the moment you accept this, you'll die, Satsuki. Okay, I'll cooperate. What? I'm saying I'll do what Kobazing wants. So suddenly like this? Will you be okay with it? That you're gonna die? Well, even if we're in the ballroom, we're gonna die anyways. That's not what I... Rather than staying still like this and watching my friends become murderers or starving them to death, I prefer to save everyone and die with Kobazing. Satsuki... Damn it. I'm really sorry. Because of me, you really are a good girl. However, there's one condition. Uh, what? What condition? I don't want to kill Kobazing, so Kobazing kill me. Uh, what? What are you talking about? It's the same no matter what way we die, but why do you want to die by my hand? If I became the culprit, I'll be executed by Monokuma then. I hate that. I'd rather be killed by Kobazing. You're gonna grab a gun in the arsenal here anyway and kill me, but do you think it hurts a lot when you're shot? It's not a pain or a problem. I don't like being killed by a thing like Monokuma. You don't want to? No, there's no way I can kill you. The same goes for me. How can I kill Kovazing? <sighs> There'll be no end to this. Instead of fighting, why don't we sit down with this nonsense? That's because Kovazing first looks at me and suggests the impossible thing to kill him. If you can't, why did you accept then? Then don't do it! That's no good. I've already decided. Then kill me already! I can't. I can't do that. I really value Kobazing, so killing my friend is... I'm not happy that I'm your favorite, okay? Wow, Kobazing's face is blushing! Uh, uh, idiot! I'm talking about an important thing here, and we're going back and forth. I'm not messing around. <sighs> my stomach hurts because I haven't eaten anything. Are you okay? You know, we don't have much time either. It's a fact that I might die tomorrow. In the meantime, the others may be in pain or planning a murder. Everyone's in trouble. Satsuki, what if we do it like this? You... Have you ever seen a Western movie? Western movie? I haven't seen it, but I know what it is. They walk back and forth in a courtyard, then turn around and shoot at the same time after some time passes. Oh, fu- Oh, no! No! I know exactly what he's fucking doing, dude! 
Ah, oh, shit, man. Fuck, dude. Oh, God. Yes, let's decide with that. In the worst case of this, we could kill each other, but it's still not suicide, so the others will be able to live. It's uncomfortable that I have to shoot Kovazing, but... Okay, that would be fair. Let's do it with that. All right. If it's decided, let's move. Pick one pistol. Kobazing, are you still not done? What's taking you so long to pick a gun? Wait a minute. Almost done. Okay. Are you ready, Satsuki? Uh, I'm not a girl who goes back on their word. Besides, it seems to be more fun to decide this way. Fun, you say? I already said it again, again and again, but seriously. I mean, we played a lot of games so far, right? Basketball, running, poker, tarts. As a result of doing my best without looking at our fights at all, the total was equal. Was it like that? I remember the results of all of our previous matches, so probably so far. Kobazing and I have had 14 matches, 6 wins, 6 losses, and 2 draws in perfect balance. You really have a good memory on useless places. <laughs> Suddenly, I thought this was the last game. So it made me feel strange. I can't believe that I'm risking my life at all. If you want to give up now, you can tell me. I really don't want to force you. No. Because I'm serious, too. Like Kobashikawa said, I'll stop playing around. Are you ready? Yeah. From here, go back and take three steps. We'll shoot at the same time after that. Okay. Sonsky! Haruhiko! Kabashkawa? Kubashkawa! Haruhiko! Why? Why did you do this? <laughs> Good. Satsuki. <laughs> Last game was my victory. That's not what I mean! Why did Kobashikawa's hand explode? Sorry. I saw it. This is... This is unbelievable. Let's do it again! I was worried about what would happen if I died immediately. In case I was hit in the bad spot. Fortunately, it looks like I'm still alive. Yeah. I'll tell you what I can. Sorry, Satsuki. I lied. <laughs> because you killed me. I'm wanting to save everyone. That's not the truth. What? Who I really... Oh, wait, I, I guess she said the other one. Sorry. Who I really wanted to save was you, Satsuki. Me? <coughs> it was useless information, so I didn't tell the others because it would just confuse them, but... I was searching for a few days, and I found a badge with the head of Monokuma on it. Because I found it, Monokuma appeared and said he would give it as a prize, and congratulated me on finding the treasure. That's the treasure, Monokuma said? It was really here? There. It showed me a photo of me and you kissing, doing a selfie. Kobashikawa, even at a time like this, kind of a joke. It's real. It shows our commemorative photo with you as my lover. You shouldn't forget. And then it vanished. K Kobashikawa and Sa Sa we've never done such a thing. It's the same for me, too. There are no memories of me and you, of pictures of me and you let alone kissing. <laughs> we met here for the first time a month ago. <laughs> but why? It 
doesn't feel odd. Even if that photo was a manipulation, I felt unknown emotions. And I thought that I didn't want to let you die. I, I have no idea what you're saying. Kumashikawa, stop it. It's too cheesy. Put up with it. I'm already gonna die anyways. I wanted to say this much. That maybe I've liked you after some point. Even if I die like this. There are guys like Kinjo, Mikaru, uh, Maida, so they'll find out about this in a minute. So you better go back to your room. Act as usual. Pretend you don't know anything. Leave the rest to me. Why are you saying that, Kubashikawa? Stop it! Stop talking! No matter how much they think, they don't know that I, the victim, did all these tricks. Part of it was to pretend to shoot you on purpose and give away my right hand. This, it's a pretty old gun. It can explode while pulling the trigger even if you put normal bullets on the magazine. <coughs> Kobachikawa, you can't die! No, I'm gonna die. And Satsuki, you can live. Leave it to me. I can't make someone as cheerful and happy as you die like this. See. I'm sorry for doing this in such a crappy way. And when the trial is over, tell the other guys that you're sorry too. I'm sorry that I fought with Teria. I'm sorry for sacrificing Kinjo and the others. I'm sorry that my feelings don't want Sak Satsuki to sacrifice herself. I'm doing this in order to die. Once you leave, I have to get the job done. You have to go now before someone sees this. I hate this. This is wrong. I want to save you. Please go. <coughs> because this is my last wish. Please listen. I want you to live. Leave! <laughs> yeah. Just do that. Thank you, Satsuki. Whether it was real or fake, I still loved you. God, dude. God, dude. Ugh. And then, I went back to my room. As Kobashikawa said, I stayed until morning. I didn't know what trick Kobashikawa was going to do at the time. I wasn't sure until I heard your story in the trial. This is all I know. Like Yuki said, Kobazing was by me while intentionally trying to save me. In order to confuse you while doing so. In other words, he did everything to save me. What is this? This is... this is too much! Haruhiko was apologizing to me, and I tried to kill him. I... <laughs> I see now. If he saw the letter sent by Teria, he wouldn't go to the arsenal in reverse. Nevertheless, the reason Kabashikawa went to the arsenal was because... Haruhiko didn't even notice Teria's letter from the very beginning. It was only to sacrifice himself and to save only Satsuki. Hold on. Then why? Why did he do it the same way as Teruya Otori? The gun exploded in his hand the same way. I unless he did some kind of trick and did it, in did it in advance. That's what I thought too. But when Haruhiko chose a gun, he was doing something in the corner for a long time. He was the kind of guy who was telling me that guns weren't fun or usual, so... I wonder if he had some kind of knowledge about them. That stupid idiot. He really gave up his life? For others? And you, you just kicked the opportunity he arranged to let you survive. What were you thinking? I don't understand this at all! 
I know that Ka I know that Kabashikawa liked me, and he didn't want to do this. After all this, I've been struggling a lot since then. Until the class trial was held. I don't think that's the way. It's so unreasonable for all of you to die for just one person, right? I feel sorry for betraying Kabashikawa, but I'll be happier if you guys live. How can that be? Blood-related familiar actions are a law that puts one's life most importantly. You, for people you just met. Well, I'm not as smart as Mikaru, so I don't think I can give a very cool reason for it. I just told myself that I was the culprit, because it makes me convince myself that I did this. B but then why? Why didn't you say everything from the very beginning and hide the truth more suspiciously? Because you didn't even say the backstory. You just said you're that you're the killer, so it's a rack confusing reasoning. That was because of Kobashikawa. He decided to take a chance between all of you in order to save me. Because of this. Especially if Kenjo finds out, it would have seemed from Kabashikawa's view, who had already died, that I would have insulted him. I didn't want to do anything that would put more disgrace on Kabashikawa anymore, because he already tried di uh, died trying to save my life. That's why I told you at the end. Still, don't think badly of Kabashikawa. He wouldn't have thought of this, and if it wasn't for Kabashikawa, we all would have died. Such a thing. It's not possible. Satsuki-chan, are you really satisfied with that? Even if we live, you'll die. No, I'm fine dying, but why are you all so worried? I'm very fine with my choice, no matter what happens. Don't forget to smile. It's one of my, the teachings of my own brother. And it's my belief, too. Uh, am I crying? Uh, a little, but like, that's just, uh, that's what you gotta do when you're acting as people who are crying. You gotta go the whole way. You gotta go the whole nine yards. I can do it very easily. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's it's a little bit of a mix of both. It's one of the teachings of my own brother. And it's my belief, too. But after Haruhiko died, you cried, right? That's, that's off topic. Please just think Satsuki wasn't Satsuki for a minute. Satsuki. Yuki, thanks to Yuki... I was able to do everything. Rather, I feel relieved. Oh yeah, I was impressed to see Maida couldn't come up with the whole truth about Kabashikawa. Yuki's a real teacher in my heart. Well then, Yuki, I think we can finish the trial soon. Give me that thing you always do at the end. That? Yeah, that. Climax reasoning, let's go! All right, let's do it. Okay, leaves without noticing the letter. The arsenal. Talking to the culprit, they're arguing. Mm. Came to the conclusion to use the guns on each other. Pointing the guns at each other, and then his fingers get blown off. I think I may like this chapter more than anything in base Danganronpa, Lineage Cooked. No, yeah, this chapter is really good. <laughs> it's really good. Um, mm, okay, so it would probably be this, uh, no? Okay. Then is it here? Okay, yeah. And then that there. All right. Let's go. First, this case begins with not the criminal nor the victim, but from Teria. Teria couldn't stand the extreme situation and began working on a plan to kill Haruhiko, the victim of the case. 
Teruya first started to write a note to Haruhiko, asking him to come to the arsenal. This was done with the paper and pen that only Teruya had in the ballroom, where there, where there was nothing else other than weapons. Teruya, who had finished writing the note, then puts the note through the doorframe of Haruhiko's room. This was the same way that Mitch did in the first murder. Then, Teruya, who put the note safely into the room, first entered the arsenal before Haru arrives. This was in order to do some work. That task was to do, load non-standard bullets into a pistol magazine. When a person shoots the pistol in that state, the gun explodes from the inside and destroys the hand of the person who used it. Teruya used this method to let Haru use the gun and thinking of making him shoot, and that's the reason he went into the arsenal before anyone else. Having done everything he needed to do, Teruya quickly returned to his room and waited for Haru to come out of the room. Teruya's plan was to enter the arsenal later on with Haru. However, as Teruya returns to his room and stays on watch of the hallway, he fell asleep due to accumulated fatigue. This was everything Teruya had influence on in this case. Meanwhile, at that time, Haruhika was probably having a lot of trouble thinking in his room. As we just heard, Haru was already planning to save someone dear to them, but at the cost of his own life. But the discovery of the treasure was triggered to start this life-threatening plan. As the situation gets more and more extreme, Haruhiko feels like he can't wait any longer and begins acting. He decides to meet with the other person who was chosen as the culprit for this case. At this time, whether Haruhiko saw Teria's note or not is uncertain, but... It's very likely he didn't pay attention to it in the first place, because he was immersed in his own thoughts. Haruhiko's plan was also a plan that took place in the arsenal, but if he saw the note calling him into the arsenal, he wouldn't have headed there in the first place. Either by luck or misfortune, if Teruya hadn't fallen asleep, a fairly complicated mess would have unfolded. After a while, Haruhiko safely met the culprit. Until then, the culprit hadn't even realized the true purpose of this case. Haruhiko asked the culprit to quietly follow them into the arsenal. They went into the arsenal side by side. One may have thought no one would know, but in fact, all of the actions that Teruya and those two were doing while walking around the corridor up until this point were being shown to Kurakawa. She wasn't sleeping from the very start and was keeping watch of the hallway. In actuality, it was Kurakawa that most of the weight into, put most of the weight into solving the mystery of this case. Or pulled most of the weight, I guess. <clears throat> because Teruya went to sleep, the killer and Haru entered the arsenal without anyone's interference. Only then, Haruhiko, who was alone with the culprit, confessed his feelings for them. I think it went this way. Someone was going to do the murder and ask them to kill themselves before that to save everyone. This is what they asked the culprit to do. Once they accept, the culprit would also be executed for committing a murder. It was certain death, so Haruhiko didn't want to force them into making such a difficult task. But the culprit did not hesitate to respond to Haru's proposal. However, the culprit refused to kill Haruhiko himself. Conversely, they told Haru to kill them instead. Haruhiko did not want to kill the culprit, as the culprit did not, did not want to kill him, and they kept arguing to each other in vain for a while. Haruhiko, who felt there would be no end after going like this, was determined to make a fair suggestion to both sides and asked a decision to shoot each other at the same time, just like a game in a western movie. In the worst case scenario, both could have been shot and died by the, each other's hand. It didn't violate the two's goal of saving the others, so the culprit agreed with the, this proposal and began preparing. The culprit and Haruhiko were choosing a gun for each other, and we heard that Haruhiko was in the corner of the room. This was probably to manipulate the magazine with the bullets at this phase. We all know the very consequences of this. Indeed, Haruhiko did the same thing Teruya did earlier. It was to load it with non-standard bullets. How Haruhiko did the same thing as Teruya, I'm not entirely sh I'm not exactly sure whether it was coincidence or not. Maybe it was because Haruhiko, who had a lot of interest in firearms from the beginning. So I think he accidentally came up with that method by pure chance? Either way, there's only one reason Haruhiko did this. He didn't want to shoot the culprit. The two of them, ready to go, stand a few steps away and pointed their guns at each other after turning around. But even though the culprit sincerely tried to shoot Haruhiko, he was going to lose to them from the very beginning. And so, as Haruhiko intended, his hand was destroyed and he was shot by the culprit at the same time. 
The culprit, who couldn't understand the situation, ran to Haruhiko. Then Haru told them the truth. It wasn't us that Haru really wanted to say. It was the culprit themselves. Although Haruhiko was dying, he was hoping that the culprit would survive, and he said he would do the rest to save them since he still was breathing to do one last act. The culprit was unconvinced, but soon they decided to accept Haruhiko's last request, and left Haru to do the job once they got out of the arsenal. Of course, the trail of this was also being monitored by Kurokawa. After confirming that the culprit was safely gone, Haruhiko began the final cleanup while keeping his short life as much as he could. First, Haruhiko picked up the flash and smoke grenades from the arsenal, and likewise put a wooden plank inside the arsenal door between the handles, and then put the flash and smoke grenades on top of it. This could only be done by the people inside, and thanks to that, there was a lot of difficulty when we tried to reason it out. The plank served to make the door be forced to open while being crushed, causing the grenades on top to naturally fall on the floor and activate. Subsequently, Haruhiko started messing around in the arsenal to make it look like the culprit did it, although it didn't connect to anything. And as a result of repeating a series of processes, of blocking the door and cluttering the interior, Haruhiko's bloodstains were all over the place, inside the arsenal, creating an unnatural bloodstain like a path of blood. Haru, who finished everything just before the, his life ends, reached to his feelings of satisfaction, because he was able to save someone, someone they cherished. But in the end, later in this trial, the culprit confessed by their own will. However, we weren't able to know that it was Haruhiko who planned all of this. All of this happened at dawn, and later in the morning, Teruya and I broke into the arsenal, and Haruhiko's body was found. In fact, in this case, the person who would be called the culprit was close to Haruhiko, and the culprit who just lost his life was the victim, himself, who actually finished this trick. But in the end, Haruhiko wanted to save the culprit, even at the cost of his life. The culprit of this incident, the identity of the killer who Haruhiko cherished and wanted them to live so much. Damn. Satsuki Ranami, it was you. Perfect, indeed, Maida has a good reasoning, but maybe you have a talent for organizing cases too. I'm not happy at all. Satsuki Ranami. Satsuki-chan? Why is the mood so sad? I didn't go out to see you like this. Satsuki, you've always been like that. You're a strong girl, much stronger than me. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I don't know if it's a strength or not, but even at times like these, it's my goal to be happy, even in the worst atmosphere. Well then, Maida's reasoning is over now. Shall we get to the voting time? Satsuki, can you really do that? To just die and... Not being scared? I don't want to die. Of course I'm scared. But it's already gone water. It's already gone water? What? What else can I do but to accept it? At least not all of you will die, because you can all live by sacrificing only one. I'm satisfied with that. Damn. This sucks, dude. Water under the bridge. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. It's Don't jump scare me. It's fine. Hey, Miss Urinami. Why do you keep trying to go ahead of the trial here? I'm the host. Oh, well. It doesn't matter. Seems like you guys reached a conclusion. And that's all. Now, you guys, vote with the switch in front of your hands. Who will be chosen as the blackened? And... If you, will your answer be the correct answer or the wrong one? Now then, what's it gonna be? <sighs> I didn't want to believe it was gonna happen, chat. But... 
Yeah, since last investigation, I really have been kind of thinking this was probably going to end up happening. <laughs> Not, I didn't know the exact way it was going to happen, but... Ah, uh, jeez. Hmm. The voting ended unanimously. The culprit of this case, and the black end is... The identity of the black end who killed Kawashi Kawakun was Miss Satsuki Irinami. You guys were right. Congratulations! Actually, what is with this case? A murder case that's not a murder. If I knew it would be like this, I would have made the rules more thoroughly. Hey, isn't it already too late? Hey, everyone. You guys are doing it badly. I'm, I was, I as the person in charge of this party. Can't you please be a little brighter? There's no way I can be happy. Satsuki-chan is going to die now. Because it's painful. Satsuki worked so hard for us, throwing her own life. We couldn't do anything, even after reaching this point. You're wrong. It's not that you can't do anything. Satsuki? Yuki, didn't I tell you before? Hope's not to be found, but to be... Oh, shit, that's right! She did say that early. Fuck! And that was the name of the chapter. Shit! Ah, oh, God. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hope is not to be found, but to be created. You know why I decided to save you all by sacrificing myself? Because that was my own way of creating hope. What do you mean? If I survived by myself, it would have been meaningless to live in a world where there's no fun and no cobazing around. And more than anything, my power to defeat that guy is not enough. Al? I'm smiling right now, but I'm more angry than anyone inside. I hate the mastermind, don't you guys? We're being treated like this because of that big dummy. If it wasn't for him, Kobashikawa wouldn't have died. Magi died. Higa died. Tomori died. Hatano died. Yamaguchi wouldn't have died. Inori wouldn't have died, or Uihara either. That's... we know that, even if we don't say it. If it wasn't for Monokuma's influence, we would have entered Hope's Peak safely and had a pleasant school life. That's right. Although more than half of our friends have already died. I want to defeat Monokuma no matter what happens. I want to punish it. I want to smash it. Hey, what are you saying all that stuff in front of someone else's face for? So, I'll bet my hope on all of you. On us? I never wanted much. I'll be leaving this world soon. I just have one thing. No, wait. Please promise me two things. One, be sure to survive for Kobazang and me. Two, that Monokuma guy. Please give it a good beating to that mastermind. Full paid revenge. Satsuki-chan. This is bad. Really bad. You dare agitate the students as you want in front of me? The headmaster of this school? Even insult me in my presence? Annoying! Anyways, Miss Irinami was chosen as the Blacken, so she's to be punished in the end. Garfield33 with the $2. I love seeing people realize how good this game is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty freaking excellent for a fan game. Can't lie. You won't make fun of me anymore when I'm done with you. In that regard, I've prepared a very special punishment for the ultimate clown, Satsuki Irinami, for your crime. Come and give it your best shot. I'm not afraid of anything like you. My friends will definitely kick your sorry butt. Wait, Satsuki, you don't need to be executed. I'd rather die. It's my fault too. I'm a sinner too. It was me who tried to commit a murder. I'm supposed to die. Monokuma, execute me! Satsuki's done nothing wrong! <laughs> now then, let's go! A very heart-pounding punish- Monokuma, hold on a minute! Ah, time! Ah, what? Jeez, you're tipsy. Way to ruin my mood. Let me say to my friends a few last words. Daria, didn't someone tell you? No one's bad. Monokuma's the bad thing here. Everything's because of that thing. If Teria keeps feeling guilty, then try harder to catch the mastermind. You don't need to be sorry at all. 
But if you die and make an aton atonement, then that's the end. So it's good. And as for you, Tyra, Tyra Strong, you have a very strong heart to overcome Ayame's death. Please keep supporting everyone like you always do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Satsuki-chan. Thank you. Next is Mikaru. It's the first time I've seen Mikaru act so surprised. I don't know what makes her so surprised about... I don't know what makes her so surprised, but... As long as Kinjo is in that shape, everyone needs a genius like Mikaru. I know this kind of is an unreasonable request, but... Please try to cooperate with everyone. And find the mastermind who brought this terrible misfortune on all of its victims. <laughs> and Kurikawa. Stop! Shut up! Who said I was waiting for your long speech? Don't say anything disgusting with the smell of hope. Punishment time begins! Eh, that's too much. When the villain is found, found out, you're supposed to wait for them. Let's go hard! Punishment time! K Kurikawa and Maida, I didn't get to say anything to you guys, but I'll leave the rest to you guys. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot. Kobazing, I love you. Damn. <laughs> My voice is kind of straining a little bit, actually. <clears throat> that hasn't happened in a while. It doesn't hurt, it's just kind of like wavering a little. I put so much into the other scene that it's just... <laughs> Anywho, oh jeez. Uh, it's one of these things. Oh no. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's a reference to Pop-Up Pirate. I remember that toy, yeah. <laughs> they ended up like that, trying to play a hopeless game. Adios, funny red-nosed lady. Satsuki Chan, no. Damn it, damn it. What do you think? Sad, right? Desperate, isn't it? What a lame hope. You guys won't be able to do a thing before you punish me. No, it isn't. Uh, Peanut Kicks with the $5. Stellar voice acting for this. You really sell all the characters and emotions. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Had some, uh, had some voice cracks in there, but I think it's just because I'm a tiny bit stuffed up from the crying. But uh, hopefully it worked well anyway. <laughs> Oh my god, Monokuma appearing over the Monokuma. We, we have double the Monokuma. I'm seeing double. Four Monokumas. Okay. <clears throat> no, it isn't. What was that? Maida? Who says I'm desperate? I'm not like that at all, right? Maida kun Of course. I'm really sad that Satsuki died. But we've fully inherited Satsuki's will. You won't stop us anymore! After I came to Hope's Peak Academy, I'm more full of fighting spirit than ever! Monokuma! Did you suddenly take your medicine? There's nothing scary about burning raw spirit alone, though. He's not alone. M Mikaru? From this moment on, I will retract my previous solo actions. I will cooperate to put Monokuma in the trash. Oh my god! Mikaru-chan! Well, what kind of change is this? Don't be mistaken. I'm not trying to play friends here. I now owe a debt. Because of that, I have to pay it off. Why is Miss Mikaru suddenly doing this again? Miss Mikaru just needs to do as well as before. Poking around and having fun. Why should you care about Monsieur Anami? 
Shut the hell up! Irinami Satsuki is a human being that deserves respect. I've seen this for the first time. Ever since I was born into this world. To be able to give up one's life so purely for others. That is what I would call true hope. It was a life that that guy tried to save anyways. I'm fed up with murder games that aren't fun. Murder games that are getting boring. Doesn't that seem like the perfect time to beat you down? Monokuma? No. Rather, the mastermind controlling you from the shadows. Huh? No matter what you try, you can't do anything. It's already beyond your own grasp. No. It was you who kept us in the ballroom. We made up our minds. Right before they died. You will run out of ideas. We already know a lot more about you than you can imagine. Now it's you who's cornered. Well, I don't know, but... Everyone's working hard. So I will too. I'll do my share for Haruhiko's sake. Me too. We will definitely get you, Monokuma. I'll avenge my friends who have died so far. What's with these guys? Rather than despairing, they're burning with fight alone. You guys are bluffing. You can't do anything anyways. You'll find out soon that you're only left with despair. Damn, I, I, I'm I loving how hyped up everybody is. This is good. This is good shit. And so, the fourth class trial ended. We lost two of our friends, Haruhiko and Satsuki, who couldn't be exchanged for anything. The will that the two, of, two gave us was definitely engraved in our very souls. We're not afraid. A step by step from now on will be a big leap towards true hope. Kinjo! Kinjo! Can you hear me? Answer me if you're awake! Immediately after leaving the courtroom, Mikaru, who finally offered to cooperate with us, disappeared before we could call her. Everyone except for Mikaru went to check on Kinjo's condition. However, Kinjo was silent. We had no choice but to go back to each of our rooms with a little cluttered feeling. Yuki, open up! Yuki, I was asleep! Open up! <laughs> uh, what? Who is it? Is it morning? It's not even 7 a.m.? Hey, come out- Oh, I, I don't know who it's supposed to be. Hey, come out already, Maida. Uh, what? Wait a minute! Okay, it was, uh, Mikaru. Why did you take so long to answer? Was it because to f was it to feed information to the master? Oh, wow, you really gave up on him that quick, didn't you? <laughs> Mikaru. What? That's a moody expression you've got. Uh, no, it was just Mikaru coming to my room. I wonder if the sky's gonna the sky is gonna divide in two now. It can't be helped. As I mentioned yesterday, I decided to cooperate with you in order to defeat the mastermind. I, I know that, but. Why did you suddenly change your mind? I told you, I'm going to follow Iranami's idea. Hatano is a great person, but Iranami is more than that. Just because she is a human who can... As if, Maida. Don't make me say useless things. You always drown in every story. You're always drowned in every story, aren't you? Sorry. Also, now you're calling me by my name now. So? Are you dissatisfied? Want to be in call called incompetent for the rest of your life? Uh, uh, no, no, of course not. It's better to be called by my own name. It was a bit embarrassing to be nicknamed incompetent, though it was accurate. I haven't admitted it yet. I don't want to be friends, but I want to have at le the least courtesy, as long as I've decided to cooperate. Mikaru tends to be weird like this. Usually she looks down on us and ignores us, but she doesn't do it recklessly. She admits something that can be admitted whenever necessary. Stop talking about nonsense. Come to my room, right now. Wh what Mikaru's room. What are we doing today? Suddenly asking for that. I don't care if you've got feelings for me, so shut up and follow me. <laughs> I'm getting tired already. Oh no, wait. That, that was also Mikaru. Oh, okay. Oh, Rei-chan, did you bring Maida-kun? Uh, Tyra. Otori and Kurakawa, too. Hey, don't do that shit show. How many times must I repeat that you're not my friends? Everyone. Everyone. What happened? She has a teddy bear, oh my god. Looks like Mikaru came out of her room at dawn and called us one by one. Teria, those goggles? Uh, this, um, it was horrors. 
It was left in the dressing room. And I brought it. Aw, fuck, dude. This is an atonement for myself, and also my own commitment to continue Haru's will. We need to move forward. That's right. The efforts Kabashikawa could and Satsuki-chan, we should never forget. The will of our friends who have died so far. But we can't just be so sad anymore. Now's the time for us to fight back. Bit by bit. Very little. But something is starting to change and starts to move. Our hope is not to find it, but to create it. Only these words struck in my mind. So, why did you call us? This is an operational meeting. As long as I've decided to cooperate, everyone here will be beat up Monokuma and together we'll escape. Rachan, being an ally makes you feel so reliable now. Everyone here? Wait, then what do we do about Kinjo? When I look at that guy, he's a statue, doesn't respond to anything, and I don't even know if they'll ever wake up. But even if he wakes up, I'm not certain if they'll ever recover. Then, of course, if we have him, you should be comfortable, but throw away your lingering regrets. We have no choice but to strike out, because I felt the fighting spirit from you. I chose to cooperate. Mikaru, staying away from us until now, have you found out something? A lot of pile, a lot of pile of things. Those of you who have not found anything are more curious. First off. Wait a minute. There can be a surveillance camera here too. You okay with that? Are you an idiot? Of course I know. That's why I called you into my own room. My room is the only one that can, that can jam surveillance cameras. To put it bluntly, it's instant jamming. Instant? Jamming? Uh, Otori-kun, do you know what she's saying? Not at all. <sighs> In short, my room is safe. The words here will not be linked to the mastermind, and our appearance is not visible. Really? Amazing! How did you do it? Power room. Audiovisual room. And I assembled some useful parts from, from the warehouse. That's how I made it. It's only a temporary measure, so even if it's not perfect, it'll be safe. Mikaru, you didn't just spend time alone. Of course not. You better thank me for inviting you. So, the first goal is to find out the identity of the mastermind. Of course, that's the most important thing. But before that, let's look at the preconditions. Preconditions? Why did we get involved in this division? I mean, that's the biggest mystery. Why did Hope's Peak Academy become this way? Why doesn't anyone come to save us? But that's the first thing we said with the others, right? At that time, there were both Kinjo and Meikaru, but no conclusion was made. No, unlike then, there's one fact I do know. At first, I thought it was a hy hypothesis, because it was nonsense, but I was convinced after yesterday. Meikaru, you don't mean... Yes. It's a fact. A considerable amount of time has already passed since we entered this school. And the truth is, we don't remember it. M mikako chan Oh? Also, I knew you would react when we talked about this, Mikako Kurakawa. What? What's this all of a sudden? I'm obviously deeply grateful to Satsuki. And thanks to her, I was told to cooperate in order to punish the Mastermind. But before that, there's a traitor we must catch. Mikako Kurakawa, you know something. Honestly, I'm dubious about your true nature. Tell me everything you know. If you can't, then I'll consider you on the Mastermind's side. No way! Is this true? Uh, this is nonsense, right? Oh, there's that fucking buzzing noise again, dude! What's going on with this? No. Trust me, I... If you're innocent, tell me the facts that you know. You do know that there's not only one or two suspicious acts you've done so far, right? <clears throat> Why did you shut your mouth? Are there any circumstances that you can't tell us? Mikaru, don't do that too much. Kurikawa has to calm down before... Hello everyone, it's morning, 7 a.m. It's wake up time. Let's have a lively one today too. Morning announcement. It's already 7 a.m. That's not the problem right now. Oh right, almost forgot. I don't 
don't know if everyone had a good night, but I want everyone to please go to the gym. I have some great news to inform you. See you soon. <laughs> what? What? I'll leave this story for later. But just so you know, I won't move on this time. Move on this time, Mikako Kurakawa. What's the great news? It's only been a day since the trial was over, and suddenly... We'll just have to go. We have no choice. Has the... I feel... I, I'm Like, is the, is the post-trial for this... For Chapter 4 really just this long, by the way? Like, has the chapter still not technically ended? Because I'm a little confused. <laughs> Mikaru and Kurakawa. The air seemed to flow smoothly, got tense in an instant. Okay, yes, it is still the post-trial. Okay, gotcha. In this tense mood, Monokuma shows up to add even more anxiety. We all go to the gym, as Monokuma said, without concealing the unpleasantness. There was a reality waiting for us that we could not imagine. The first thing we knew as soon as we entered the gym was that Kinjo didn't come. If Monokuma didn't say anything, it only means he still fainted. But that fact is so casually forgotten, because a more shocking scene unfolded in the gym. Huh? Who? A guy? <laughs> what? Jotaro Kujo? <laughs> no. But, huh? Everyone is here. The class trial ended yesterday, but I'm sorry for calling again so suddenly. But no matter what, there were things I had to tell you. It's a bit early, but I'll announce the motive. A surprise motive event. Introducing the transfer student. What? <laughs> this time I transferred to Hope's Peak Academy, the ultimate inventor, Yamato Kisaragi-kun. Please greet him with an applause. What? What? Yeah, I know it was the guy from the photo, but like, huh? Kisaragi. Nonsense. Yamato ni. Wait, what? What? Is he your brother? What? A suspicious figure who suddenly appeared as the transfer student. With his appearance, the situation began to unfold like a roller coaster. What the fuck? What? What the hell are you talking about? Oh my god, what? 90% spoon of the $10. Love this trial. Yeah, uh, what happened? No, dude, what? What the hell? Oh my god, what is happening? What the fuck is going on? Uh, you might want to start at the skip to chapter 5 in the new game menu as there is a visual and game bug. Okay. Um, well, I guess we can do that next time, then. Uh. Yeah, hold, hold up, hold up. We, we've saved, we... I'm sorry, I'm, I have to... I, I need a second to think about this. <laughs> Oh my god, what? Okay, uh, hold up. I don't know what to, I don't know what to put up on the screen for now. Let me, let me find, let me find an idle image of some kind. Because I don't want, uh, uh, like, nothing on the screen while we talk. Hold up, hold up. Give me, give me two seconds. Uh, 
Uh, I'll, I'll put up a, a picture to accurately describe my mood right now. Uh, hold up, hold up. <laughs> This uh, this is yeah. I think this uh, I think this gets it about right. <laughs> Gene pop forty five with the ten dollars without love it cannot be seen. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this case for a second. Let's let's uh let's let's do a little bit of discussion about this. And yeah, to answer Nautilus's question, what do you think of Terrier wearing Haru's glasses? I think it's really sweet. I think it's cool. Uh, they look pretty good on him too. Like I, I think they match his design pretty well. So like, um, it's it's nice to see the characters really kind of having a, a having a shift after something important happened. But uh. Oh yeah. Okay. God, this was definitely the best chapter so far. <laughs> like, um, I really liked chapter three. I thought, um, I thought the uh, whole thing with like Kinjo being like led to question his motives, and uh, like that that whole thing with uh, Uehara was really cool. Um, but like, but this one just kind of like, kind of like blew everything else so far out of the water. To be honest, like. Uh, it was a really cool premise, uh, it had a really, like, cool setup, um, it had even better art, like, the art has been improving gradually, it has this insane ending, uh, with everybody, like, coming together and then the reveal of a fucking transfer student, which is such a cool idea, by the way, that is something that I feel like, you know, should have been done in a canon Danganronpa game. They kind of like teased it in V3, but it didn't really end up going anywhere. I think this was a really cool uh, thing to follow up on. Um, now, talking about the murder once again, though. Um, dude. Um, on one hand, like, yeah, as, as you guys probably suspected, I am... Uh, I am very sad about Satsuki, but uh, at the same time, despite the fact that I am sad about Satsuki, I see, like, number one, I saw where it was going. Like, it made sense. And also, I think it was, like, how do I put it? Um, it was It was nice that even though she died, she still got to have like a really important role in the like development of the plot going forward, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, it was nice to see Satsuki kind of like, you know, have have a impact that w will presumably last for the rest of the game because, um, as, you know, obviously a lot of people were comparing this to uh, Sakura's trial in uh, in DR1, and that's true. Um, it did remind me a lot of that. But, like, the, the thing that stuck out to me so much about when that happened uh, in that game was that, um, you know, when, when Sakura, Sakura calls on everybody to sort of, like, unite, to, you know, give up fighting and each other and, like, not let another murder happen it affects them so much that they actually legitimately are like yeah we're we're not gonna do this ever again and then they don't um so i don't know if that's exactly what's going to happen in this try or, or in like the upcoming chapters of this game but like she has absolutely made a positive impact that is changing all of the characters for the better and i think yeah i don't know that's um it's it's really interesting. Also, uh, Nautilus saying, keep in mind this game was released in between early 2013 to late 2015, so this game is not inspired by the DR3 anime nor V3. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily think it was trying to take from either of those things. I just think it's interesting that it kind of ends up doing something that one of those hinted at the possibility of and then didn't really actually do anything with it. Um, I think it's... Interesting that despite being the kind of a perv type character, Haru's final moments are an instance of pure, genuine love for another person. Yeah, I actually really did like that a lot. Um, I think, like, you know, I, I don't think that 
Haru necessarily had like so many of those jokes that he was like a completely unlikable character or anything, but it was something that stuck in my craw a little bit for a while. Um, but uh, but you know, it, it was good to like see him sort of be developed a little bit more seriously and given um, a little bit more room to like flex his muscles as a crew, uh, as a like a meaningful character, you know what I mean? Instead of just a comedic character, quote unquote. Um, and I mean, I guess in that sense, Satsuki is absolutely the same. Satsuki is kind of like, in some ways, she's kind of like the most emotionally intelligent person in the room, <laughs> which, uh, you know, that that was great. I really liked that they gave that to her instead of just making her like completely airheaded. Um, LME Lowell really puts a fascinating new perspective on self-sacrifice. In a roundabout way, Haruhiko's death was in vain just because Satsuki was too hurt to go through with it. Yeah, I mean, in a way, yes. But, like, to be fair, if she had gone along with what Haruhiko wanted, then everybody would have died uh, without being able to find out, like, what happened. And for Satsuki, letting everybody else die just to save herself wouldn't have been acceptable. Um, which, you know, makes sense. It's, uh, it's very... You know, it's it's very sad, but it makes sense. Um, da, 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 da. I did love how Haru, Satsuki, and Terry are both the funny character, but at the same time find incredibly human character. Their flaws are realistic and human. Yeah, absolutely. That's I, I we we like to see it. We like to see characters being realistically flawed and human. Um. Ba ba ba. Uh, Marisan, uh, if you if you missed all of the the stuff like in in the trial and all that, the vods are still in my live tab. Like they're all uh, preserved. They're not like they haven't been deleted or anything. So uh, if you want to go back and watch that stuff, you can absolutely do so. <clears throat> uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Thoughts on the Satsuki Haruhiko relationship? I think they're cute. I I, I definitely think they're cute. Um, and it, it helps that they've kind of had their dynamic built up across like the entire game thus far. So you get to actually see like the reason why they would like each other. Um, I do think that like in the, in the part where he's talking about the, uh, the photo, it is a little like, <laughs> I don't want to say cringy dialogue, but it's just like a little bit like I saw us taking a selfie, which like, is really funny in the context of somebody dying in your arms. But like, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a little corny. It's a little corny. But I think they deserve to be a little corny, you know? Um, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, when you mentioned about Sasuke's free time events linking to this trial made me look at it in a whole new light and I love it even more. Uh, thank you. I, I, this is just kind of on the fly analysis, I guess. But uh, that really, uh, I think doing Satsuki's free time events before this trial really made it hit different for me. Uh, I, I mean, it would have been great either way, but uh, I think it worked pretty well for that reason too. Um, there was something that I saw up here that I wanted to respond to. What was it? Any criticisms with the writing overall? Um, I mean, I I would have to like look back through the whole game to give you uh, any more like concrete criticisms related to the other stuff. I think really my only criticism of this chapter would be, and it's not really like that big of a deal or anything, um, but I do think the, like, the whole thing with, like, oh, Teria planted the gun with the exploding bullet thing, and then Haruhiko did that also, like, completely independently, did not know about Teria's plan at all, uh, is, like, a little bit, like, it's a, it's a little bit much. It's, it's a little bit, like, okay, kind of feels incredibly convenient that that happened, but... I can sort of accept it given where the like where it all went in the end. Like I still think it was good. It's just that that particular part was like a little goofy. Um 
And yeah, they, they do build up the, the fact that Haru has a knowledge of guns, which makes sense. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just kind of interesting that they both did the exact same thing. Um, let's see. Opinions on Surugi. I found him to be one of the most well-written characters I've seen. I, I really like Kinjo's development up until now. I think uh, he's uh, really hitting a, a breaking point here, and I'd be curious to see whether or not he's going to continue to go further down the rabbit hole at this point, or if he's finally going to snap out of it. Because like at this point, he's just like practically comatose. He's just laying there like, no, I didn't get owned. I'm not wrong. My, my worldview can't account for this so it doesn't exist and also love is fake and i i hate everything but uh <laughs> i don't know um yeah uh I'm, I'm i'm really interested to see where he goes i think it's it's very fun to have a character who has a so like such an ingrained worldview and such a consistency to it that like they literally cannot reconcile the opposite uh, in a way that, like, once they are faced with something undeniable, like, they, they have to sort of reevaluate their entire life, in a way. Um, do I have a Discord? Nautilus asked. Uh, I have a server, yes, but it is only available to patrons for now because of some, some nasty spam that it got when it was open to the public. Uh, you only have to pay like a dollar to get into it though. And uh, you do not have to be consistently subscribed to the Patreon in order to stay in. So like if you stop pledging to the Patreon, you're not gonna get like kicked out or anything. It's like, it's a, it's a one-time thing. So you can feel free to do that if you want, uh, if, it is, if it is worth it to you. <laughs> um, let's see. Why does the YouTube chat always scroll me down without me wanting it to? Um, even when I scrolled up. Um, let's see. Oh, Nesmi's VAing really helped sell the reveal of Haru's motivation and actions alongside Satsuki's actions and speech in the trial. Thank you. <laughs> I. Uh, it's, it's actually a little bit more of a challenge for me to sort of like get this stuff, like try to nail the delivery on this stuff because I'm seeing this stuff for the first time. Like I, I don't know what's going to happen. So uh, so like with, with stuff like Umin Echo, at least, I like know that shit like the back of my hand so I can deliver based on what I already know about the scene and like the future of the series and all that stuff too. But like, I don't know. It is an interesting challenge to kind of have to do the opposite. Uh... Uh, really like how basically every character besides Akane, she was kind of just vibing the entire chapter as a significant moment in this chapter. Yeah, I mean, like, she she at least, you know, got her, her sort of, like, guilt assuaged a little bit. She got the little ego boost from Satsuki, which was good for her. We like that. Um, thinking about it, it might have been better if Haru was the super high school level sniper and the sniper was the pilot since her death didn't involve her talent and Haru's was more related to guns. Eh, eh possibly, I suppose. Uh, um, hope you're prepared for the next couple chapters. Only gets better. Oh, oh, I am, I'm highly anticipating. As far as Haru, his likes does actually have the military listed, so know him knowing about guns isn't far-fetched. Uh, yeah, I guess there's that. So, uh, what's the deal with the transfer student? Uh, yeah, I have no idea where that's gonna go. Um, that's, yeah, what? <laughs> oh, wait, chapters, plural. Yeah, we just uh, finished four, so I would assume there's two left, right? Because there's usually six in every Danganronpa game. Um... But, uh, yeah, damn. <laughs> I'm a little worried about this transfer student being introduced so late into the story. Oh, well, I think it's definitely gonna have some ramifications, especially considering that the, the student was name-dropped and shown in a thing earlier. He was supposed to be like a... What was it that he was again? Like, he was a part of a previous graduating class, right? He was like a... a um, why am I blanking on the word? Why am I blanking on the word? 
of somebody that's already graduated. Oh no, that's the older one? What? Oh, so there's a different one? Oh, that was, oh yeah, that's right. That was Hanzo Kisaragi. That's right, that's right. There was an alumni uh, with the same surname. That's, that's right, yes, yes, yes. Okay, 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 you got me. Thank you for clarifying that, I, I didn't remember. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, obviously though, uh, he has something to do with Kurikawa because Kurikawa said, uh, called him Ni, uh, as in, I suppose like Nissan, which would mean, you know, that's her brother, if that's the case. But then I guess that would mean that, uh, Kurikawa is related to the Kisaragis in general, which would mean... Which she did kind of have a reaction to that name earlier, right? So I guess it would make sense if, like, Hanzo Kisaragi is her dad, too. Um, oh, shit. Damn. I wonder if the buzzing has anything to do with him, because he's the ultimate inventor. You know, you make a good point. You make a good point. And then there's also the whole thing with, like, there was somebody in the basement that one time... Like with the, um, Monokuma doing the Aoni bars thing, <laughs> um, yeah. There's hmm, a lot to ponder about, huh? Um, do you have plans to stream this again in the near future? Uh, hopefully, probably. I won't promise exactly when though, and I and I will tell you this: I probably definitely won't be next week. Um, just because it is kind of hard to do two streams in a week, and I do kind of like to, uh, you know, keep going with Umineko. Maybe, like, whenever we finish episode three of Umineko, we can take a break week and then, like, make it a DRA week or something like that. Um, and then from there we'll figure out kind of stuff like that. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Um... It's, it's kind of actually been a little bit interesting to make this one a little bit more gradual. I, I, I'm sorry if it's been like kind of hard to stick through the hiatuses. I promise that I won't make it as long as it has been in the past because, you know, obviously there was a lot of stuff going on between those streams. But uh, it has been interesting to kind of make this one more of a slow burn in a way because, uh, I don't know, I've just gotten a lot more time to think about it in the in the in-between. So, I don't know. Um... see uh diary starts slow and seems unpolished but it's so good it's a well-oiled machine of a fan gun and it's amazing seeing everything click into place as it continues yeah i th i think it has definitely continued getting better as it goes all right yeah uh it i think we have gotten all of our discussion out of the way so let's go ahead and do fan art now Let me just get everything open for it. Give me a moment. Uh, okay, got the everything for Twitter opened and nothing has been added in the Tumblr tag. So I think we will go ahead and begin and let me know uh, if I have missed anybody's. And uh, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and turn off. Or we can just get rid of the idle image. Um, let's find our fan art window. Turn that off. Why is the... There should be a uh, fan art thing uh, source on here, but I, I don't f see it, so I guess I'll just have to add it back. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Fine. Uh, let's drag this down here. Change the window to this. Okay, so we've got... First, we've got uh, a fan art.
for last week, last Umineko stream. And this one is from ma, 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 a dash pining dash tree on Tumblr. Uh, and it's, uh, I didn't know I wanted to bully a piece of, uh, bully a pride of furniture so much. And this is of Lucifer. Uh, I got beat by human furniture. She sure did. Too bad. <laughs> um, but maybe she'll get it next time. She has more chances. Um, oh, wait, I didn't turn off my mouse. Hold up. Let me turn that off. All right. Uh, and now we've got, after that, what, why is there a smaller window there? Don't do that. <laughs> um, okay. So next we've got, <laughs> we've got this one from, uh, from Cthulhu, uh, on Twitter. Uh, they made him wear the tubby suit. <laughs> to... <laughs> Teruya Tubby. Well, you know, maybe maybe with cool goggles he will be able to uh, cover up his shame a little bit more. <laughs> oh my god. This is really funny. Thank you, Cthulhu. Um, and we've got one more after this, and that is this cool shirt! from uh, Prant on Twitter, which says, uh, this is Nautilus from the chat. Um, says, hey, Nesmi, I'm Nautilus. I'm here to share my Teruya shirt because I love him. This is actually pretty well printed too. Like uh, it's, uh, it, it's not got like the block around it. It's not got any like weird JPEG artifacting. You did a pretty good job printing this shirt. If you, if you printed it yourself, I don't know if you did, but I would have to assume so because I don't think any uh, official DRA merch exists. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a this is nice Terrier drip. Oh, I asked for help from an adult. Understandable. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> uh, Nezumi lore fact, I guess. Um, my mom when I was very, very small, actually worked at a, a shirt printing uh, press like company type thing um, that my grandfather ran. It was a local place. That place has not existed for a really long time because uh, my, my grandfather passed away a long time ago, but uh, he ran it for quite a while. Uh, and I got like, I, I basically like I was I was I was there all the time as a little kid just like watching uh, like Sonic and Bugs Bunny VHS tapes in like the back while they were printing t-shirts uh, very fun times but uh yeah I guess there is nothing else to say now so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I enjoyed this chapter quite a lot. And uh, we will be getting back to Danganronpa another sometime in the near future. Until then, I hope you guys all have a great week. Uh, I will see you again, hopefully, on Saturday. I have scheduled, uh, once again, another Umineko stream. We will be getting about three-fourths of the way done with episode three, so look forward to that. And until then, take care, everybody. See you later. Goodbye.